Okay, I'm in. I am in. Cool. So yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to just drop in the chat and I'll be bouncing around. And if you do a super chat, I will definitely answer that question. Um, boom. Looks like we got two people in here so far. Let me know if you can hear me properly. If you could drop down in the live chat, let me know if you can hear me. So at this point, I'm pretty much just going to wait until it gets busy, or at least we get some people. So yeah, feel free, as I said, drop down in that chat, ask me any questions. I don't usually, uh, I don't usually do live streams, but um, I just thought I would hop on. Seems like it might be fun. So we'll find out. It's going to probably take some time to get some people on here, but the more I do it, the more people will join. That's a fact. Let's see here. Okay, cool. So it is showing that I am live on my YouTube. Uh, I can see myself. This is this is funny. I'm looking at myself. This is funny. I'm looking at myself. Okay, cool. Now I know I'm live. Yeah, so feel free to ask questions. You know, it looks like there's five people in the chat. Let's uh let's talk about some stuff. Oi. Let's talk about, hey, Daddy. Hey, Jeremiah. Hey, Gabe. Nope. Hey, Aman Kapoor. Aman, you sound familiar. I think you're on the Patreon. You do sound familiar. What's up, everybody? Hey, Daddy. Wow. That's quite the way to address somebody. That's how my uh, girl addresses me. Ray, hello. What's up, Ray? I had a manager named Ray once. He was a cool guy. I like that name. Ray is a really cool name. Aman Kapoor, yes, I am. Waiting for the 29th. I knew it. You're waiting for that vampire service. Top tier on Patreon coming up the 29th. How did you break your drug addiction? Good question. Um, okay. So how did I break my drug addiction? Okay. Well, it's one of those things where after you do it over and over and over and over and over and over, you come to a realization that you feel like shit on a daily basis. Okay. You, you, there's this like reoccurring theme of feeling like complete shit. And um, usually when you have a drug addiction, you try to um, do everything else except eliminate the drug. So you maybe you'll try getting into like fitness or eating healthier, but you'll still use the drug. And then you realize you're still stuck in that cycle. And you, you get to a point where you realize you can't move past that cycle unless you let go of the drug. And when you break that addiction, that hold that you have on that drug, there is a huge opportunity to progress farther on your path. Drugs are interesting. They're very interesting. Um, and it's all about moderation 
and there is a time and place for everything. It's not that drugs are just bad and it's not that drugs are good. There is a time and place for everything. And first and foremost, if something has more control over you than you have over it, then that's when it becomes a problem. And a lot of people like to trick themselves and say, um, a lot of people like to trick some, trick themselves and act like they don't have an addiction, but they know they do, and it keeps them steady. Um, so that should answer that question. That was the question, how did you break your drug addiction by Ray? Okay, so do you start with the universe B or A? Okay, so you start with the Sephiroth. Okay, so I'm going to show you the tree. So this is the tree right here. This is what's known as the Sephiroth. Okay. Universe A, Sephiroth. And then this would be the universe B, the clip off from an initiatory perspective. Um, so naturally, as you can see, this is the DNA symbol. Okay. This is the DNA. So why does this look like a DNA strand? Because it runs through your blood. Okay. There were many ancient shamans, many ancient seers, powerful shamans, where this, you know, runs in their bloodline very strongly, and they don't know anything about this. They don't know this Kabbalah tree, but they are high-level initiates on this tree simply because they use their intention to always do what is in their best interest towards their evolutionary growth which you'll, you'll learn a lot more about from the book series of Carlos Castaneda, The Fire From Within and The Power of Silence, which literally talks about the ancient shamans and how they, how they perceived their own spiritual evolution. And they didn't use Kabbalah. They were just, they trusted their instincts. They trusted their intuition and they followed their spirit. They used their spirit to take action because this runs in the blood. So when it comes to universe A specifically, that is primarily going to be the realm of the spirit, the Sephiroth. So this, and I do card readings for people all the time, and I can find and locate that people are located, you know, usually if someone's booking a card reading with me, most of the times they're already some, you know, they're already on their journey. They've already made that intent to start going down their journey. Um, so you could be traveling and you most likely are traveling on this tree already and you don't even know it it just runs in the blood now when it comes to universe b and when it comes to universe b initiation specifically like working through universe b with intent to gain power um that's going to take a little bit more in-depth ritual meaning this is natural you can literally travel through universe a sephiroth simply by intending your highest potential and actually taking the steps and actions that are necessary to make progress. Now, when it comes to getting into universe B, the clip off, and then the backside, which would be the tunnels of set, you've got to, you've got to perform ritual. So you have to be in the, the field of a cult. Okay. You have to activate the totality of your second attention, which is the part of your being that gets excited when you do things that are ritualistic. There's a part of every human being that can activate when someone starts immersing themselves within ritualistic acts, whether they're ritualistic acts that are well-known and have been performed over and over and over again throughout time, or whether you're creating your own. And um, that there's a gateway that you have to open using ritual magic and the ancient shamans, the way they would get into universe B is because they were shamans. They didn't give a fuck. They were always doing ritual. They didn't know what they were doing all the time, but they knew from their intent. They knew that they needed to do it. They just do, they act on what their intuition says over everything else. I have a friend who's a, sh who's literally a, a shaman. And uh, he's naturally a shaman. He doesn't go around calling himself a shaman, but he's, he's one of the most shamanic people I know in my entire life. Everything about him is shamanic. The way he speaks, the way he sees things, 
the way he acts. And from he's one of my closest brothers, and he taught me a lot on my journey, and he continues to teach me a lot. And um, he showed me what a real, real shaman is like. And his everyday life is extremely ritualistic and shamanistic. And he has no, not really any knowledge of this entire tree or not too much knowledge about, you know, occult magic in general. He just does everything off intuition and he acts on it. He doesn't care if other people think he's weird. He doesn't care what other people look at him as. He just acts on it because he knows the power of his intent. And um, that's how the ancient shamans used to get get in themselves into death. But the most effective way is if you, you know, you immerse yourself in ritual, whether you're just naturally doing it or if you know that that's necessary to get into universe B. And then you can go through this death, which is a gateway, and then pop into the clip off universe B and start working through the spheres or the backside, which is the tunnels of set. So that was to answer the question. Um, let's see. Ooh, we got some questions coming in. So that was to answer the question, okay, so do do you start with the universe B or A? So th to answer that in its simplicity is you start with universe A. You essentially have to get experience with universe A to then even be able to get into universe B. There's a misconception where people think you have to, like they think that they've gone through the clip off and the tunnels of set and then they need to initiate into universe A. That makes no sense. That really makes no sense. That's that's inverted. That's not true. You you can only get to universe B in the clip off if you've already made somewhat progress within universe A from an initiatory standpoint. Okay. Let's see. Thanks. I was just playing with that comment. I'm being serious now. Okay. I agree. Hello, sweetheart. Hey, Wild Style. What's up? I, you know, it's funny, wild style, wild style vlogs. I remember you from way back in the day when I first made my YouTube channel. I remember you would comment on some of my videos and it's good to see you on here. Ray, thanks for answering. Who taught you what you know? Who taught me what I know? Good question. Um, so if you know me and you study my channel a little bit, you would know that I am, um, I come from a bloodline of people that have practiced occult magic, you know, time and time again, and we're very, very successful at it. So I've always been very naturally inclined and gravitated towards occult sciences. Um, it took me a long time to fully embrace it, but I've always been naturally gifted in the occult field. Um, so who taught me what I know? So I was raised, so my mom naturally is very intuitive. She's very, um, I mean, she's, she's, she's like the moon. My mom is very moon-like. She's very receptive and I've learned a lot from her. You know, not saying that she was always the best mom, not saying that I was always the best son, but I learned a lot from her and you can tell and I can tell that she has a strong connection to her highest potential, a strong connection to her intuition. And I learned how to be receptive by observing my mom from a young age. And then my dad is very religious, but he's not your typical religious guy. He's like, he is a real serious Christian. And when I say that, I mean, he's like a Christian that actually carries power with what he says. It's weird. And I've grown up with this and he's an extremist and he's somebody that is like dangerous with his religion, meaning he will like, like he, he takes care. He's, he's a, he's not your typical Christian. He's like a Christian that takes care of his enemies, takes care of his enemies using Christianity. So he'll like pray to God to like teach you a lesson. And he, that's different than what most Christians do, but he's like, my dad's like that. My dad's ruthless. And he's always taught me, my dad has, I've grown up learning this from my father about the inner Illuminatis, inner elites, royal families, um, Sanhedrin, Jewish rabbis, they're all connected. My dad has taught me about these people from a very young age. 
So this gave me a, a very strong mindset that there's something corrupt in the world that we live in, specifically within the governmental system and who's in control and pulling the strings. So naturally being raised by these two parents that are, you know, naturally pretty powerful people. Um, I've always had a good foundation in regards to occult magic. Now, as I said, I, I didn't embrace the occult path until years. Like it took me years. I was the age of 22 when I first embraced the occult sciences, like fully. And I'm 25 right now, going to be 26 pretty soon. So I dove head first when I was 22. Um, so to answer who taught me what I know, well, me, I always went to the spirits that had power. So when it comes to people that say, oh, this is what you should do. This is what you th should think. I would learn from certain people on YouTube, but I wouldn't always take what they're saying to be a hundred percent true because I was raised to question and I was raised to be, di um, to look deeper. So I didn't always just take everyone's word for it. So for example, as I grew in this occult field, there was many opportunities and times where people presented occult rituals for me that came from books, like books I didn't know about, like books that I didn't know who the authors were came from different occult orders. And I never felt led to performing the rituals that were within these books. My intuition told me, no, it, it told me no. And I followed it. So very early on in my occult journey, I learned how to do invocation, which is calling a spirit to you and communicating with the spirit. Okay. It's taking an archetypal energy of, a, of an energetic force and calling it to be present with you, okay? So when I learned that technique, that was my first technique in the entire call field. And when I learned that, I started using it. Very quickly, off of my own intention, I found certain types of spirits that I naturally felt inclined to work with, I felt drawn towards, and then I used invocation to communicate with them myself. I wanted my own perspective. I wanted to know what that spirit had to tell me. I don't care what this person said. I don't care what this person said. I'll, I'll go to the source myself and I'll get my own perspective, right? And that's how I always approach the occult field. And like, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of people on YouTube that I, that I learned from. Like as I've been on my journey, you know, in my early stages, there was people on YouTube that I would learn from. I would spend like a couple months studying one person's channel and then naturally it would gravitate to a new person's channel. And then I would find some other channel and it would, I would bounce back and forth. And it was like, as I grew, I would follow these different channels when the time was right, when the seasons were right. And then over time where I'm at now, I, there's not many people that I study from anymore um, to that level because I've, I've gained a lot of knowledge. And I've, I've, for some of them, I feel like I've definitely over, uh, definitely passed them in regards to knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Um, and that's just my honest opinion. So who taught me what I know? Myself primarily going straight to the source. Okay. Um, wow. So if anyone wants me to answer their question, like first and foremost, cause I'm starting to get the, the chat is getting built up, go ahead and leave a super chat and I'll cover that right off the bat. Um, wow. Amazing. Will the stream stay up after, stay up after it's over? You know what? I think I am going to leave it up. Gabe, no, because in your other videos, I thought you said start off with universe B first. Did you mean start off with universe A? but use universe B deities. Um, so, and I get what you're saying, Gabe, and I, I may have said that. Um, so let me address this about my channel, my YouTube channel. So there's things that I've said on my YouTube channel, for example, like a year ago, 
that I actually don't currently believe anymore, that I don't agree with anymore. So then a lot of people might say like, well, then why do you still have the videos out? Why do you still have the content out? Um, and part of the reason why I still have the content out is because, you know, the information is still valuable, but I would rather, and I think it's more impactful if I have content of me out that shows my old belief system and my old mindset compared to where I'm at now. So if you literally take the way I am now in my newer videos and me being me who I am now, and you go back to a year ago or two years ago, you're going to see how much I've transformed as a person. And that should be a testament of how powerful this occult science really is. You're going to literally see how different I am as a person. Okay. So there is, there has been things that I've said in my past that I wouldn't say again, and that I don't fully, fully, fully agree with, but I'm leaving it there because for the people that take their evolution seriously, they're not just going to watch a video of mine in the past and then not look at the, the near future videos, the, the more present videos. And once again, I think it teaches a very powerful lesson of people that study my channel and go back far enough and see, like, you can literally see my documented evolution on YouTube from the time I began my initiations in Miami up to now. I When I started... And Wild Style can attest to this. She's been tuned into my channel for a while. Um, when I started, I didn't have a business. I didn't have anything. And I always knew I would. And I always, I know it's going to grow to be one of the most impactful occult channels on YouTube. I know this. I know that's what's where it's headed. But I think it's so fascinating how you can literally go through my channel and see me go from nothing when I was literally in my clipothic initiations, when I was in my tunnels of set initiations, and look at the person I've become now. I think that's the most powerful way to learn from actual observation of real life. Um, so yeah, so will it, uh, because in your other videos, I thought you said start off with universe B first. Did you mean start? So yeah, so that answers that, Gabe. That's why those um, videos are still up there. So yeah, exa exactly what I said in regards to universe A and universe B. Universe A is natural. So you'll travel through this naturally. Just set the intention. Study the tree, okay? If you want to do it intentionally and you want to figure out where you're currently at right now, then start studying it. Um, my Patreon is a great place for that. You can go to my playlist on my YouTube channel, the 21 Archetypal Paths, which is associated with all these different paths. And study those because you're located somewhere here. As long as you've made the intention to start making progress in your journey, that takes you from Mount Kuth, the physical plane, and brings you upwards into the beginning of your initiations. Yasod, Ho, Netzak, Tifereth, Gavura, said, back to Tifereth, cross the abyss, Bina, Chokma, Kether. Okay, so this can naturally happen. You don't need to know about the occult. Just you have to be impeccable. You have to be ruthless. And you've got to make uh, the sacrifices necessary in regards to like, can you let go of certain attachments you have and follow your intuition over everything and you'll make progress. And then, as I said, then you get into ritual and that's how you get yourself into universe B. Okay. Ritual magic, um, working with universe B entities, like you mentioned, Hecate, any of the Ars Goetia demons, um, Lilith, the main arch demons of the cliff off Lilith, Lucifer is like probably one of the most important. If you're going to be doing universe B initiation, Lucifer, Hecate, Belial, and Lilith are going to be the four most important spirits you could ever fucking work with. Okay. The most important. And I'll, I'll explain that another time. All right. How do we know? How do we know it? How do you know what? In the blood, so much to learn. Oh yeah. Oh, we got a, we got a super chat. Have you ever worked with the Greek gods? Um, you know, not really. I mean, Lucifer, I believe Lucifer is a Greek God. Um, so if Lucifer counts, then yes. But for me, 
I really, my choice of spirit work comes from the Kabbalah. So I work with all of the, um, I, I'm not even going to say I work with, you know, I don't work with spirits really anymore. I just, I command them. Um, when I did work with spirits, it was more so um, through initiations. So I, so I could use them to help myself get to my highest potential, achieve the source within myself. Um, so when I was doing that and when I was working with spirits, um, I was working with the Kabbalistic spirits. So that would once again fall along the lines of um, Lucifer was the most important. Um, for those of you that can even see on my channel, you should see in the bottom, I don't know if it's on your bottom left or right, there's a literal Lucifer symbol there. Okay, And that is because I made a deal with Lucifer a long time ago. And I made the deal that I would, the deal that I made with Lucifer to take all his power was that I would put his symbol on my YouTube channel. And this is before I even had a YouTube channel. And there's the symbol. And Lucifer has taken me through the entire clip off, through all the tunnels of set and made sure I was successful. And Lucifer made the deal with me because I was a human being who had the potential to achieve the source within me. And Lucifer knew that about me. And that's why Lucifer made that deal with me to give me all of his power because he knew I was going to achieve the source and Lucifer's smart. So if I achieve the source, Lucifer wants in on that. So Lucifer is a huge one. Um, Belial. Belial is very important because he's known as the worthless one. A lot of people don't know why Belial is so important. It's because he's the worthless one. He's known as the worthless one. And why is that important? Because when you're getting into clipothic initiation or universe B initiations, you need to lose your self-importance. Okay. The, the key to be successful in those initiations comes from um, receptivity. And obviously, if you have too much self-importance and you're too egotistical, you're trying to speak rather than listen. And that's preventing you from being receptive. So once again, so... Um, Belial is known as the worthless one. So when you start working with him, you're going to start feeling like shit <laughs> straight up. You're going to start feeling like shit mainly because he's going to do things and manifest situations that destroy your ego that are going to literally energetically make you feel worthless, which is extremely important in clip -othic, tunnels of set universe B initiations especially if you want to cross the abyss properly. So right before I went to cross the abyss, I made a deal with Belial. And um, I didn't know at the time why I made the deal with him. I felt like I needed to though. And looking back, I know exactly why I made that deal with him right before I crossed the abyss. I just, I felt like I had to. And I listened to that intuition and I'm very glad I did because I had way too much self-importance still. And the only way you can successfully cross the abyss in the uh, clip off and, and overcome Karanzan, you have to rid yourself of self-importance. And I'll tell you, Belial, when I made that deal with him, there was so much shit that manifested right after that that um, broke me down. It burnt me out. And that allowed me to cross. Uh, and it was tough. Okay, it was tough. Um, so yeah, so Lucifer, Belial... As I said, Lilith, Lilith is going to teach you her vampiric qualities, and she's also going to teach you how to be the receiver of all the Ars Goetia. So the Ars Goetia, they feed the male principle that they steal from other people to Lilith because Lilith is the mother of the Ars Goetia. So when you work with Lilith, she teaches you the ultimate abilities of um, being receptive and being able to receive and also command um, – Ars Goetia demons. So if you want that ability, you want to work with Lilith. And I would for sure recommend it. Um, and then Hecate, because Hecate you could think of as the overarching dark mother who orchestrates all of it. She's the triple goddess. In some cultures, she's known as the frog-headed goddess. And the reason why she's known as the frog-headed goddess is because she can leap through the different paths on the tree. On the Kabbalah, she can leap, she can jump from jump, jump, jump anywhere. So if you want the abilities of Hecate, the ability to be the ultimate 
receiver of everything beneficial, the ultimate ability of receptiveness, or if um, you want the ability to travel anywhere on the tree, the Sephiroth, the Klipoth, and the Tunnels of Set, triple goddess, then you would definitely want to be working with Hecate. Um, she's very powerful. And she's important at the very... Towards the end stages of initiation, Hecate becomes very important. Um, the Dark Mother. So, Lilith has helped me by allowing to initiate into her succubi. Exactly. Vampirism is very important. Um, so cool. Thanks for the uh, super chat, John. Anyone else, if you want any uh, questions answered right now, go ahead and drop a super chat and I will cover your question right off the bat. Otherwise, I'm just going to brisk through and just answer as I go and just, you know, see what's going on here. All right. So we got 19 people with nice. Make, hey guys, everyone who's tuned in, hit the thumbs up. Okay. Hit the thumbs up quick. Takes a second. Hit the thumbs up. Let's do it. Um, Ooh, good question. Okay. I, I saw a good question. I'm going to get to it though. Hey, nice. There we go. 13. We were, we, we just doubled the thumbs up just in that second. Ooh, let's go. Okay. All right. Okay. So there's a lot of questions right now. So I'm going to be skimming through it once again, super chat. If you want your question answered ASAP. Okay. Finding where I was. Okay. So much to learn. Yes, there is. Um, hi, you Ika. Hi. Hey, what's up? Interesting. Okay. I was there. Brother, can you talk about how you recovered your brain from drug addiction? How I recovered my, my brain from drug addiction. So I'm, I'm assuming how I recovered after drug addiction. Um, yeah. I mean, I just started eating healthier. Um, you'll notice that like when you're addicted to some substance and you've used a drug for a long time, you've got it. Like once you quit it, you have a lot of processing to do. So you're going to deal with karma basically. So all that cause created an effect. And if you were addicted to something, you've been causing addiction to yourself for a long period of time. You've got a, a lot of stuff to burn through and heal to get back to your progress. So yeah, it's the same thing with me. You know, I had to really change up my diet. Um, I had to eat healthier. Like I, right now, I, I don't even eat meat right now. And I'm not doing that because I'm a vegan or I'm a vegetarian. I, I actually love eating meat, but just for my stomach to get back to my full highest state of being, I've been only eating plants and uh, it makes a big difference. It really does. And, and I would recommend it to anybody. Uh, oh, Aman Kapoor said, I just want to suggest who is watching, try Jeremiah's reading. After having it, you're going to be amazed from his, his uh, saying. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, my readings are, they're pretty good. I would, uh, if anyone wants clarity on where they're at, in the tree of life, I would recommend getting a reading. Um, let's see. Can you see my comment? Uh, I fell into a clipothic initiation unknowingly about seven years ago. Would you suggest me doing an intentional clipothic initiation since I've gained more knowledge and understanding? I fell into a clipothic initiation unknowingly about seven years ago. Um, see, that's the thing is like, if you don't know what initiation, clipothic initiation you fell into, then that doesn't really help you too much. So what I recommend for everybody is like, if you're going to get into, you know, initiation and universe B initiation, and you're feeling drawn towards the clipoth, like it's time, then just start from, from, from the very beginning. Like it doesn't matter how many experiences you've had with the clipoth before, because remember the world we live in is hellish. There's a lot of like black magic being used on a daily basis. So yes, most of us listening to this matter of fact, I would say all of us listening to this right now have been through some sort of clipothic experience for sure. That's a fact. We've all experienced hell to some degree. Um, and it would make sense, you know, like obviously since this is a real part of reality, yeah, you, any, ever, a lot of people go through like clipothic initiations here and there, you know, to get through these hellish experiences. But if you want really to develop yourself and gain mastery over hell, 
you want to start from the very beginning of Klebothic initiations um, so that you can understand what it takes and that you can, you know, start understanding the starting point and then the finish point. And then you can figure out where you're located and, you know, you'll see like as you travel through the spheres and the archetypal paths, you'll start seeing how it actually starts manifesting. Like it's really trippy. Like that's one thing that I think a lot of people don't understand when you're going through initiations, it, it's trippy. It's actually trippy because you're experiencing real life archetypal experiences that are directly connected to the initiations. So obviously a lot of times people get into this initiatory journey and path and they don't understand these archetypal experiences even though they're happening to them, but they just don't understand it like myself. And then once you become higher level and you study it, and then you start to see it, that, that it's actually a science, you can start breaking down these archetypal pathways in the different spheres. And then you can recognize that when you were in certain spheres going into different pathways at certain points on your journey, they align directly with what the archetypal experience is associated with in regards to the 22 archetypal paths connected to the tarot and the spheres. So it's, it's really trippy. It's, it's very trippy. And, and, and when you go through it and when I go through it, when your friend goes through it, you're going to have very similar experiences that are going to manifest in a very individualized way for you, which is really trippy. Cause I've, I've gotten three other people first myself and then three other people traveling behind me on this journey and we've all been having very similar experiences because we're going through an archetypal system of initiation that's very ancient okay okay yes fascinating did you know i am also a powerful witch yeah um i could tell i mean wild style you definitely have been tuning into you know occult content so i could assume you're definitely a witch um, well, a, but I don't like to use labels. Cool. Yes, it's all about Ray. Have you found past life regression helpful? Um, no, not really. I don't focus too much on past lives because, um, it's cool to understand if you come from a powerful bloodline and understand that you've, you know, had a powerful past life before, but the reality is, is that right now is your life. Like this is the new life. So your past life shouldn't really matter. Okay. Like there's a lot of entities and a lot of spirits that try to latch on to the human beings energy field that like to tell them they're, they like to tell you that you're an incarnation of them and they will act like they're your past lives. So there's a lot of people in the occult field that talk about, I'm doing all this past life regression in my past life. I was this, and I was doing this. And in reality, what's actually happening is there's an energetic parasitic spirit that's latched onto their energy field. And it's tricking them to think that they're an incarnation of a past life. So it's not bad to dive into your past lives and try to understand it, but just know that in this life right now, in this present moment, you are who you are. And it has nothing like you are not right now. You are not a reincarnation of a past being. You are you. You're a different person. You're a different. This is a fresh start. So don't allow any spirit or any parasitic entity energy to trick you and think that you're a reincarnation of them because that's how they fool you. And that's how they steal your energy. Um, so yeah, so past life regressions, I've done it and it, it, yeah, it can be kind of cool. Like I've, I've got some very powerful ancestorship and bloodlines, but other than that, you know, all that helps me understand and know about myself is that, you know, I really do come from, uh, kingship and yeah, that, that could, be, you could say that could benefit my path, but other than that, you know, cool. <laughs> all right. I'm still confused on the Kabbalah. That's okay. I would join my Patreon and start studying the spheres. Okay. John Rim, I initiated into Samael tonight. Nice. I love to hear that. Nice. So Samael, for those of you that don't know, would be right here in regards to the clip off. It goes Nama, Gamaliel, Samael. 
So when I went through Samael, um, it was challenging because Samael manifested in my uh, manager at the time. And Samael is the uh, on the Sephiroth because Samael is an angel and a, uh, a demon. Essentially like a fallen angel, similar to Lucifer. Um, in the Sephiroth, Samael is the angel of judgment. So he judges you according to God. Okay. And in the Klipoth, Samael becomes the poison of God. So instead of judging you in the Sephiroth, in the Klipoth, Samael will poison you. And he follows God's orders. So when it manifested in my real life with that sphere of Samael, I actually had encounters with Samael. Even though the sphere of Samael is actually ruled by a different spirit, I still had encounters with Samael. And it manifested through my boss. And... Um, he tried to poison me in regards to not physically, not literally, but he tried to poison me uh, in my reputation. He he would he would lie about me, and um, to because he was my manager, and then he had a higher manager, and she was a woman, and he would tell her lies about me to poison my reputation because he didn't like me because I was better than him, and I was new, and he was jealous, and. Uh, there was also somebody that came into the gym and they offered me a pre-workout and it was so powerful. And when I drank it, I was working. The guy's like, Hey, just take a sip. And it was random. And I was like, okay, like I'll take a sip, whatever. And it hit me so hard. And when I drank it, I realized that's the poison. That's poison of Samael manifesting. So in that sphere, I learned how to develop the abilities of Samael and become the poison of God. So I could poison the chaos entity. I could poison anyone who's infested by chaos and controlled by chaos because God is connected to the Elohim, connected to Yaldabaoth, connected to Yahweh, Jehovah. So if Samael is the poison of God, then when you overcome Samael and suck in his energy field using vampirism, you know, you just naturally are receptive and you suck it in, then you become the poison of God. So you can poison the Yaldabaoth. You can poison the chaos entity. You can poison the Yahweh's, the people that are aspects of chaos. And then it fuels your evolution. So yeah. Um, what books have you, what books have helped you the most in life? Ooh, that's a good question. <sighs> what books have helped me the most in life? Wow. Um, what books? Okay. So the 48 laws of power, Robert Greene, when I, this is actually before I dove into the occult, Robert Greene transformed my life with the book, the 48 laws of power that taught me, that was the first book that taught me how to be ruthless, the 48 laws of power. Uh, and then the 50th law by Robert Greene collabed with 50 cent great book, amazing book. And then the art of seduction. That was a, I love that book. I love listening to that book. It just gives me those dark, like those dark vibes of like, I fucking love this shit. The art of, the art of seduction by Robert Greene. So Robert Greene for sure was a great author. Um, but then as I got further into my development and I dove into the occult, um, A book that helped me understand Kabbalistic initiation in regards to the Klipoth um, was the Asenoth Mason book. Um, I believe it's called The Klipothic Tree or The Klipoth. Um, that book helped me understand more about the Klipothic spheres. Um, so I, that was one of my go-to study guides for the Klipoth. Um, the books that I've read later down the road that are very valuable and I recommend to everyone and I have a list of them on my Patreon is going to be Carlos Casaneda, The Fire From Within and The Power of Silence. These books are extremely beneficial, extremely powerful. Um, and I would recommend checking out all those because this is like, this is like high level shamanist, shamanistic knowledge coming from like, a, coming from real life experience. Like these are real people. Um, and I can attest to what's being talked about in those books and how true it is. And that's from a more shamanic perspective. Okay. So uh, 
I will be here forever on your channel. I love it. Thank you. Uh, I really am intrigued to hearing your take about the Amalek spell you uploaded last Friday and that, hey, let's go, uh, condo building collapse a week later. Does it really symbolize a tower moment? Okay, so yeah, so you just said something very big, friendly person. Um, so the Amalek video that is on my YouTube channel, the um, it's called the uh, it's called, titled Psychic Warfare, um, Take Out the Enemy, I believe is what I titled it. And on the thumbnail, it says Amalek Curse. And if you've seen that video, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. But if you've seen it, you know that I literally performed psychic warfare, war, psychic warfare on camera. And I also showed you um, how to do it yourself. And not only did I show you how to do it yourself, but I also explained how the simple observation of the video is going to be ritualistic in nature. Using the, It's the same technology that all these A-list celebrities are doing on their music videos and all these movies, um, the music industry, the movie industry. Same, It's the same concept. Op, a ritual through observation. So yes, so if you knew what happened, and I'm going to make a whole video on this, but if you saw during the Amalek curse video, I... Uh, had the sigil written on a white piece of paper in red, and I explained the red is symbolic for Mars. Okay, the red is symbolic for Mars. And I made it very clear that this ritual that I'm doing on camera is geared towards destruction. It's geared towards a big shift, a big change, destroying completely the enemy. And the enemy... The number was um, uh, 13, okay? And uh, let's see here. If you look at the tower card, you'll see it's ruled by the planetary energy of Mars. And that's the same planetary energy that I used in the Psychic Warfare uh, video that I uploaded not too long ago at all. And I told everyone that it's going to have a very powerful effect. And I'm going to be documenting the results from the ritual. And uh, yeah, so far, we've seen this building collapse in South Beach, Miami, in Dade County. And for those of you that don't know, and once again, I'm making a whole YouTube video on this because I want to explain it in depth. But for those of you that don't know, when I started my initiatory journey, it all began in Miami, South Beach. I started my initiations in 2019, the very beginning in South Beach, Miami. That's where I lived. And I would go to Dade County often because I worked a job that would travel sometimes. Um, so long story short, that building that randomly collapsed was not a random event by any means. This was part of the results of the Amalek curse video. And it directly links into the tower card for the tarot. And whenever the tower card is pulled, it means forcible change. And the change, 99% of the time, is going to be destructive. So this is directly connected to the Amalek ritual that was uploaded to my YouTube channel, which is still going. We're still going to see a lot more manifest. Think about it. That's a permanent video that's on YouTube right now. So anyone who performs that ritual on that video and anyone who observes it from this point forth, it's still going to take effect. And it's always going to destroy the root of chaos, the enemy. And uh, that was that building that collapsed in Miami is directly connected to the tarot. And if you follow my Instagram page, jer underscore 477, J-E-R underscore 477, you'll know that the day before that building collapsed, I posted a picture of the tarot card, the tower, on my Instagram story the day before the building collapsed. And I said, titled on my Instagram story, I said, there is a big shift coming. There's a big change coming, um, which is directly connected to this card. And I also mentioned on the story that in order to cause a change to this current multiverse, it first needs to completely burn to the ground. I literally said, this is word for word. If anyone who follows my Instagram fall, uh, knows, you know, if anyone who, who's on this chat that follows my Instagram, let the chat know that I'm that I'm being serious right now because you'll you would have known 
that I posted this. And uh, sure enough, the next day, that building collapsed. And that is going to cause a huge change to the mass collective. Huge. Similar to 9-11. So after 9-11 happened, nothing was the same ever. Except this is different than 9-11. Because this wasn't orchestrated by inner Illuminatis or elites or bloodlines. This was caused by high-level occultists like myself. And um, once again, I'll release a whole video on that. So... I'm going to leave that there for now. Um, cool. Okay. Because I love magic. Same. Right. I don't believe extraterrestrials help the Egyptians. <sighs> yeah. I mean, I, I think extraterrestrials try to harvest human consciousness. I don't think they ever really help mankind. They act like they help, but they're really just trying to like take the um, – they try to intercept the source connection because as humans, we're so powerful. We have literally, we are the most powerful beings in the entire um, universe because we're physical bodies that have astral counterparts. We have a bio, um, we have a bioplasmic energy field and we have a soul body energy field that contains soul fluid. So we are very dynamic beings that have physical grounded bodies. Um, and aliens, extraterrestrials don't really have that. And they don't have the same potential that we have. So they like to observe us and study us to try and harvest that source potential that we have so that they can suck it into themselves and uh, maybe potentially incarnate on earth or use it to whatever end that they want. But they don't have what we have. So I don't think extraterrestrials really ever helped. Um, rather, I would just use them. Like, like they're, they're real. So take them over. You know, instead of letting them invade you and observe you, how about you remote view them and observe them and remote influence them? Complete takeover. Um, I am trying to avoid drama. So back here. Nice. I will leave it up. I will leave it up. So I can want, rewind what I missed. Perfect. Hi, how are you doing? Hey, if anyone wants to uh, leave a super chat and you know have me address your question right now, go ahead, leave a super chat, and I'll answer your question ASAP. Other than that, I'm just going to scroll down at my own time, answer the questions at my own time. Okay? Um, hi, how are you doing? A great job watching you from West Africa. Ghana. Nice. I love that. I love that. Uh, wild style. I have shortened my watch list to a selected few. You're on it. Thank you. I'm glad to be on it. Ray, I've seen it been looking through your older vid vids. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I was at the beginning. Gabe, no. Oh, okay. I understand. Cool. Dakota, 1822. You have indeed grown a lot. So yeah, so I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So for those of you that didn't tune in, what they're saying, what Ray and Dakota are saying is that, um, as I said, that if you study my YouTube channel and you go back a year from this video, you're going to see how different I was as a person. I was very different. Um, so I leave these videos up, even though my past content, like a year to two years ago, I don't fully agree with anymore. And I don't like looking at, to be honest, it's me in the midst of my actual journey of going through initiations. Like I have videos on my channel of me when I was crossing the abyss. And, uh, I think that's a testament to how powerful this field is. And I'm leaving it on there for that reason. So I can tell people, go ahead, study myself that, you know, just a year ago, two years ago, and look how different I was as a person. Um, so we got a question. Let's see. Jumping right to it. Opinion on homosexuality. Interesting. That's a very interesting question. Um, so once again, I'm going to make this very clear. I have nothing against it. Okay. I have nothing, absolutely nothing against it. I have friends that are homosexual. I have friends that are gay. And I, you know, I have nothing against people that are gay or lesbian or whatever the case may be, but in regards to spiritual evolution, in regards to reaching your highest potential, 
you want to understand that there's a very powerful dynamic between a man and a woman. That's why there's always been a king and a queen. And I'm not saying that trying to be like, this is my idea on how life should be. No, I'm saying this from an energetic dynamic, energetic standpoint. Obviously, you're going to choose the path you choose and you can still gain power, you know, being gay or lesbian or homosexual. But if you want to reach the highest potential, you want to understand the difference between the man and the woman and their energetic structures. So in the Carlos Castaneda series, they talk about assemblage points. And that's basically the location of awareness on the body. And for the average human being, that is the assemblage point is located on their right shoulder. So that's going to be right here on me, except I've moved my assemblage point. But for the average person, it would be right here on your shoulder. And that is your, you can think of it like a, a, a place, an energetic sphere of awareness on the human being. And the male, their assemblage point goes outward. Oh, uh, excuse me. The male's assemblage point goes inwards. So the male is always looking inwards towards the source within. That's why all priests are males. That's why you have Jesus, you have Buddha, you have Prophet Muhammad. They're all males. The woman's assemblage point naturally goes outwards. It projects and it can create a bubble of reality. So when you take a male whose assemblage point goes inwards towards the source, that means the male has more potential to achieve the source within. And if you link the male with a female, now the woman can project that source reality to the mass collective. So the woman's the one that spreads it. The male is the one that achieves it. The woman can spread it. So the dynamic is very important and powerful. Now there is a state of um, occult initiation, which is called grail stating, uh, which is the complete alchemical marriage between the male and the female energy field, which is high level and takes a lot of work to do, a lot of high level initiation. I've done it um, and it's not easy. Um, but at that point, you become an androgynous being, energetically speaking. So that would be my opinion on homosexuality. Okay, we got another one. Mellow Tarot. Oh, no question? No question, Mellow? Thank you for the support. Appreciate you. Um, that's awesome. Let's see here. Picking up where I left off. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. Indeed, you go. Okay, cool. Lot, lot of these occult magic channels are just drama. And, yeah, I know. I know. That's why I don't watch them. The, the only pe person I study from right now is Tim Refat. And uh, he's on the channel Grid Keeper that is um, ran by a guy named Duncan. And Tim Refat is – he's like a 60-year-old man who's been in – involved in the occult field for a very long time, longer than I've been alive. And I came across his channel around the time I crossed the abyss, right after I crossed the abyss, which is interesting because the abyss is represented by knowledge. And as soon as I crossed, then I came across his channel. And he was talking about stuff I had never heard before. And everything he was saying, I resonated with. I intuitively resonated with. And I've been studying his channel for almost – almost two years now. And I've gotten a lot of knowledge from his teachings. And that's really one of the only people I study from right now. Another person that I'll, I'll occasionally listen to is um, Black Earth Productions um, on YouTube, Sethicus Boza, because I love the way he breaks down the occult. He, he understands. It's, it's about initiation. He understands it. I love any occultist that talks about initiation because that's the main purpose of the occult field. And when I can see an occultist start talking about high magic, which is initiation, the system of initiation, I always will have respect for that person. Um, so the, once again, the main person I study from is going to be Tim Refat with grid keeper. But you know, once again, I'm my, I'm my own person. And the first and foremost person I learned from is myself. And I have, a couple of friends that are brothers to me and I learn a lot from them too. One of my friends is he studies human design 
If any of you have heard of the human design before, and he studies it and breaks it down to a level that I have never seen anyone do before. And he is one of the people that has been initiating uh, with me when I was on my initiatory journey. Um, his name is Infinite Vibes. And he's actually in one of my YouTube videos. We have a podcast together. He's not around where I'm at right now, um, but we do have a podcast together. And I learn a lot from him. I learn a lot from my other brother, Gabriel, who's a, a shaman. Um, yeah, Ma I mainly learn from myself and my surroundings, the people that I'm actually involved with, and then uh, people like Tim Refat on YouTube. Uh, lots. I love. I love the science of the occult. Okay. Yeah, and all that drama and all that shit. Pathetic. Like it's not high school. You know. You're professional. I respect that. Thank you. Um, wow. So Medusa is Greek. Okay. No, I've never really worked with Medusa. Medusa Medusa is cool though. I have a, I have a, not a perfume, a cologne. <laughs> I have a cologne that has a Medusa head on it because it's from Versa Versace. Uh, Ray. Mind and magic makes good vids. No drama. I don't know about that guy, but cool. Wild style vlogs, Greek goddess Medusa. Nice. Gabe, no. Everyone transforms through their learning because you're a student forever. I don't plan on initiating myself in the Kabbalah because I believe we're already in a Kabbalah. Yeah, exactly. And I was explaining like the shamanistic perspective of Kabbalistic initiation is that you don't need to know about Kabbalah to initiate into high levels of understand understanding, wisdom, and knowledge. Um, but unfortunately the world we live in, there's a lot of distraction and there's a lot of programming to like prevent that from taking place. So remember the shamans, the real shamans, they, they kind of like were a little bit away from reality. Like they did their, they, they remember a real shaman trusts their intuition over everything. They'll say things and they don't give a fuck what you think. If they know what they're saying is intuitive and it's right for them to say. And it's hard to embody that, like to be like that, to be that kind of person that's tough. Um, and that's why natural shamans are natural shamans. It runs in their blood. Um, but when you're somebody that uh, really wants to break down the science and understand the roadmap of occult initiation, ancient sacred initiation, then I would highly recommend studying the Kabbalah. And although there's a, lots of, there's a lot of booby traps and snares within the Kabbalah, It doesn't mean that it's not a good thing to study because the only way you're really going to get screwed over by these booby traps and snares is if you just jump into Kabbalistic magic coming from most occult orders, 99% of occult orders, the Freemasons, the Rosicrucians, the Knights Templars, uh, I mean, you name it, all of them. They're, they're all using Kabbalah magic, but they're using the inverted pillars. Like this paper is inverted. Like this is the tree that you get anywhere. And it's inverted because this is my left hand. It should be, this should, this should be here. This is my left hand. So this is the backside of the tree. This is the tunnels of set you're looking at. Universe B. So all these occultists that have been in these orders and have been going through the alchemical rites of initiation, trying to achieve their highest potential and, and potentially cross the abyss, they've been dumping themselves into the tunnels of set the entire time. They've never been working through the regular paths. That's why if you study their lives, they usually go to shit and they usually end up shitty after these initiations. And right after they go to cross the abyss, they get fucked. They usually will get fucked because they perform an abramelin ritual within the Tifereth sphere to try and get in connection with their holy guardian angel. And they're thinking they're in universe A, dumping themselves into universe B, using the wrong directional system. And then part of the abramelin ritual is summoning clipothic spirits which is a perfect formula to shell you into the clip off. And what they tell you is that, oh, these spirits, you're going to learn how to bind them and gain mastery over them. But you're not because you're, you haven't even gotten to universe B yet. 
you're in universe A, dumping yourself into universe B, destroying your energy body. So that's why if you study their life, I mean, I don't have to explain it. Just look at their lives. Look at how their lives pan out. There's not like, like, think about it. Think about this. If their system, if, if all these occult orders systems of alchemical right initiation was so powerful, then where the fuck are they? Where the fuck is the ones that are so powerful? They're not there. They don't exist. They all fell. <laughs> they all fell. And I'm not saying that they don't have knowledge or they, they're maybe not good people. I'm not for, you know, I'm not hundred percent saying that there's a guy on YouTube that I, that I have respect for. His name's Damon. I think it's Damon or Damien Eccles. And I like that guy. He's, he seems like a really good guy, has good intention. Um, but I don't agree with his system of initiation. I don't agree with what he thinks in regards to the golden dawn. I think he has a lot of great information. I think he's a, an extremely wise guy. And I think he has reached success in his field, but I think he didn't do it the most effective way. And that's why he ended up in prison. If you know about who I'm talking about in prison for 10 years, I think it was, it actually might have been 20 and 20 is ritualistic in the Kabbalah because you have 10 Sephiroth, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and ten clip off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I believe around the time when he went to cross the abyss, or shortly after, is when he had to go to jail for 20 years. 20. So let that be a testament. Everyone who's in the chat right now, hit the thumbs up. Let's get that thumbs up to 30. Let's let's break the 30 bank. Okay. Um Let's see here. Buh, 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 buh. Hell, my daughter's name is Lilith. She was born on a street that was a hill called Jerusalem Hill. I knew a bit about her at the time, but felt the name was right. But felt the name was right. Nice. That's awesome. Sounds like there's a lot of symbolism in that. Um, Gabe, no, but learning the occult is so lovely. Wild South Vlogs. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Wild South Vlogs. I appreciate your knowledge. You're welcome. Uh, I appreciate you. John Reimer. Lilith has helped me by allowing, okay, I read that, to initiate into her second. Yep. VL Ross Damon. What's up? Yo, what's up, my man? Friendly person. You rock. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're awesome. You're awesome. And I, 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 I recognize you. I've seen you. And uh, I appreciate you. You've, you've always been giving good feedback. Weird fishes. Jeremiah, what is the truth about karma? Do we actually pay karma? Can we negotiate it with entities? Can we delete back? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, so yeah, in, in regards to higher magic, higher level magic, and I'm actually going to be teaching this on my Patreon for tiers three and four. It's going to be a part of magic school, the magic course I have, where we're going to be working with angels and we're going to be programming angels to remove karma from your being. So angels, people don't know this about angels and demons. They have two different energetic roles primarily. Okay. So demons, what they do is they take away the male principle and then they give it to the female demonic forces within the tunnels of set or the clip off. So demons, take that away. They can, they're really good at deleting from reality, physical reality. Angels, they're really good at default by adding things to your objective reality, creating things. Um, but people don't know this. They require a certain type of energy to do that. And the energy that they require is soul fluid. So you're subtracting your soul which you could think of as your purpose to create objective reality using an angel. So angels delete or remove from the soul to create objective realities. And that's why you have all these light workers that are all working with all these angels. And in reality, they're just giving up their soul and they don't even understand it. That's why they get really like, they start aging really fast and their hair gets gray. They get white spots in the center of their heads. It's because this energetic dynamic that's not talked about. Most people don't know that. So you can also train 
or command angels, if you know what you're doing, to instead of removing soul fluid, to remove karma from your soul. And I'm going to be teaching that on my Patreon so that we are going to program every one of the angels that's associated with the um, Kabbalah, which is a lot of angels, but I'll name a couple right here, some of the main ones. We're going to be getting uh, Sandalphon, Gabriel, Michael, Haniel, Raphael, Kamael, Zadkiel, Tafkiel, Raz, uh, Raziel, and Metatron. We're going to be using them to delete karma from your soul and add to your objective reality. Okay? So, yes, it, that can be done. Give to charity or give charity. I don't know what you mean. I don't give to charity. And the reason why is because you don't know who's who owns or controls the charity. I'm not going to give to any charity that's under governance by any inner Illuminati's, any royal families, any bloodlines. So if I can trace the roots and it connects back to one of them, you got me fucked up if I'm going to give to that charity. Because that's doing that's doing me a disservice. What sphere do you think represents procrastination? Um, let's see. Procrastination. Um, honestly, I mean, procrastination, that's a little vague, a little bit vague. Like that could be, I mean, there could be procrastination in a lot of them, but I mean, I know for a fact in the clip off, if you're talking about the clip off, um, that would be ruled by Belzebub and Belzebub is the Lord of flies, the Lord of disease and pestilence. So if you're addicted, then, you know, that also falls along the lines of addiction. If your disease is addiction, then obviously that can fall into a lot of procrastination. So I would say the sphere of gagil within the clip off has a lot to do with procrastination. Everyone that goes out and gets drunk with their friends and mindlessly hanging out doesn't, doesn't do anything with their life, but just try to numb themselves. That's gagil at work. Belzebub is at work. What sphere do you think represents? Okay. Weird fishes. Okay, so I think someone left the super chat. Astaroth. Nice. Not really a question, but uh, Astaroth. I like it. Daniel C., thank you. Um, yeah, I don't – I personally don't really have too much experience with Astaroth, although I do know I've um, experienced Astaroth before. I know that for a fact. Um, Astaroth is a clipothic entity, but I can't give you any personal experience off the top of my head because I don't really have it. Um, let's see. You rock. Blah, 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 blah. Jeremiah, you just gave me insight into Vedic astrology with the archetypal experience thing. I feel like Vedic astrology can tell what your archetypal story slash myth is more accurately. Um, yeah, Vedic astrology is, is great. I love, uh, when I, when I study astrology, um, I look into Vedic astrology. I find that to be more, more effective for me because Vedic astrology is going to be in the realm of the mental plane and the universe is mental. So tropical astrology is going to be more emotional based. So if emotions have more control over your mental capabilities, then you're going to highly resonate with tropical astrology. Um, but yes, yeah, so when you study astrology in general, whether it's tropical or Vedic, just in general to start learning about planetary energies and you start looking at your natal birth chart, you're going to get a lot of value. Okay, I slept on astrology for a very long time because I thought it was like mainstream. And you hear people talk about their zodiac, excuse me, their zodiac signs and yada yada yada. But uh, then when I really started diving deep into Kabbalah, I had to study astrology because these are ruled by all planetary energies. And when I started diving into astrology, it blew my mind. I was like, holy shit, I've been, I've been sleeping on this for a long time. Not good. Um, so, yeah. 
Do you believe that everything is one? And it, if everything is one, do you believe that everything is not random facts? Do we have real control over our lives? Um, okay. Do you believe that everything is one? At the end of the day, everything is one. Everything is connected to source, which is evolution. So you could think of source as being like this sphere of just this luminescent bright light that is consisting the that is that has created the entire megaverse and that energy created everything that we can perceive to interact with itself so that energy is connected into me it's connected into you and everything you can see this table this little square thing everything but most people are unaware of source and there's an actual process of being able to link with it within yourself, energetically speaking. And that comes into the system of initiation. So do you believe that everything is one? Yes, everything is one. And if everything is one, do you believe that everything is not random facts? Um, so chaos exists. Chaos is like unexpected events or unexpected outcomes. Um, so... To say, if everything is one, do you believe that everything is not random? It's not technically random because if there's a lot of chaos manifesting around you, that means there's chaos within you. So if you're not handling your own chaos, if you're not diving into your subconscious or unconscious mind, then your reality is going to be chaotic and you're going to be chaotic. And that's why your reality is chaotic. So, um, that's not random. But if you're chaotic, you're going to manifest random events, but you're manifesting them because you're chaotic. So chaos comes into play there. Do we have real control over our lives? Yes, you do. You have the choice to be impeccable, to be ruthless, and to have a warrior spirit. And it's these main things, meaning you're, you're making decisions, simple decisions on a day-to-day -day basis that are in your best interest. Like eating healthy, being aware of what content you're taking in. Uh, a lot of the times controlling your, your uh, sexual energy, which can fall along the lines of semen retention or orgasm retention, um, just controlling your sexual energy. Um, what else? You know, not putting substances in your body that alter your state of mind. These things alone, these simple things that I just mentioned, these branch off into very deep um, experiences. So if you're handling these things at the root, meaning you're applying what I just said and you're being impeccable, that is being impeccable, and you're ruthless willing to do whatever you need to do to follow your intuition and make sure your evolution is coming first. And then having that warrior spirit, meaning when hard times come, you embrace them and you be receptive to them because warriors, they don't give up. They die in the battlefield. And uh, as long as you apply these things, everything does work out all the time. Like you can guarantee it's going to work out. But if you're not applying these things, if you haven't built up those structures within yourself yet, then your life can go down different paths. It can go into chaotic pathways that fragment yourself. And uh, that's not fun. And it leads to states of being and, and circumstances that you don't want. Um, so do we have real control over our lives? Yeah, you do. Because you have the choice to embody impeccability, warrior spirit, and ruthlessness. You have that choice. Okay. Love Vedic astrology. Oh yeah. Any info on Enochia magic? Ooh, Enochia magic. Um, yes. So Enochia magic has been talked about recently and I, and I've been mentioning the Enochian angels for some time now. Um, so yes, Enochian magic is um, it's a very powerful magic because that is the magic that has controlled the multiverse that we live in. 
So Enochian magic in its totality is rooted in physics and science, okay? Like deep level physics and deep level science directly connected to Fibonacci sequences and squares or like rectangles. Um, and I'm not a complete professional yet on understanding the exact physics of it. But what I do know is that the Enochian angels were contacted by John D and Edward Kelly back in the 1500s, the medieval times. And they were hired. These two, you know, occultists were hired by the Royal family at that time. And they were hired to perform occult magic to their ends. And what they used was a crystal orb. I've got one right up there. And they would contact these Enochian, what they called Enochian angels. And these Enochian angels gave them information, psychically speaking, from channeling them, that allowed them to literally create very profound effect. And remember, they were the John D and Edward Kelly were the occultists that were hired by the royal family. And the royal family paid them for performing magic to create a reality that would saw or um, serve them. And as soon as these two occultists created that reality using Enochian angels and Enochian magic doing it, and once that reality actually manifested, then the royal family kicked them to the curb. They kicked John D and Edward Kelly to the curb, and then both of their lives went to shit right after. So they were used. So you could say the Enochian angels, if they were really that powerful, you know, why would they have one, served the royal families that were obviously corrupt using these two occultists, John D and Edward Kelly, and then kicking them to the curb. Why would the Enochian angels help create a reality for them? And um, if they're, the Enochian angels were so great, why didn't they help John D and Edward Kelly after they got kicked to the curb? They were told that they were going to get rich and have all this money and freedom, and they were kicked to the curb. And uh, so it turned out the Enochian angels really are extraterrestrial consciousness that are disguising themselves as angels, Enochian angels. And these extraterrestrial beings um, have an agenda, and their agenda is to control the multiverse on Earth to harvest human consciousness, the potential of the human to achieve source. So if they can intercept that potential – that's what they want because that's what they feed off of. And then they can lock the human in a permanent state of um, being food. And uh, that's what the Enochian angels truly are. So I don't work with any Enochian angels, but I use their technology. So when it comes to spirals, Fibonacci sequences, one of the big ones is seven spirals counterclockwise and seven spirals clockwise. Seven equates to the 13th Fibonacci of the – the seventh term of the Fibonacci sequence is 13, and 13 is the number of complete destruction because it's associated with the hangman in Kabbalah. And then it's followed by the death tarot, so death and destruction. Um, and seven is associated with the double seven Hebrew letters of Kabbalah. And uh, that's why I have seven diamonds on this ring. There's seven specifically. Um, so seven becomes a very big number. And uh, it's associated with the movie 007. So remember I said the, the spirals go like this. So when you use your wand, you cast it. So Enochia Magic is casting these spirals, and it's 007. So you go seven counterclockwise and then seven clockwise. Double O seven times. That's where this movie came from because – this is what people that are involved in the government, this is the type of magic they use. They use Fibonacci sequences because Fibonacci spirals control human consciousness. It's, it's just one of those weird sciences that's been documented through ancient script. You know, and the Enochian angels taught this type of science. Um, and spirals are connected to earth energies, ley lines. So earth energies, if you, you know, when you get to the root of occult magic, earth energies are the most, the most powerful. That's why these inner Illuminati's and these Royal families, that's why they have grid works 
in all the major cities. That's why when you go to any major city, you're going to see an obelisk. You're going to see a memorial next to the obelisk. And you're going to see fountains with certain, certain points on them, certain amount of points. You're going to see statues, certain types of statues. And this is all very similar symbolism that you're going to see in every major city. And it's because these grid works are designed to control earth energies that naturally travel through them. And if you can harness the earth energies and then program your intent or what you want from that energy that's harnessed, if you can program it in the way that you want, you're going to get a real powerful result. And obviously the, the world that we've been living in for the past 600 years has been controlled by some very sinister people. And they want to do you in because they're being influenced by extraterrestrial beings and they don't even know it. That's why they're all burning right now. Everything's burning to the ground right now. It's all going to burn. Uh, and then stuff will come from it. So yeah, so that's that. Um, let's see. Oh, and I also teach, so this 007 magic, that's also what is taught on my um, magic training course on Patreon as well. Okay. Love Robert Greene. Me too. Military. Yes. Love the art of – yes, me too. Very good book. I would listen to that book and I would feel like a fucking – I don't know. I would feel like a fucking boss. Thank you. You're like the smartest person I know of. I could listen to you all day and it keeps my attention because you teach so well. And also keep it interesting. Thank you. I appreciate that. Damn, I'm late. Military. Hey, was wondering who the red dragon is and what it represents. The red dragon? I got a red dragon. Boom. So the red dragon is going to be associated with Mars. You know, the color red is always associated with Mars. Um, and Mars is associated with warfare. So the red dragon, you could connect to being a dragon that brings about warfare. Um, destruction. Like, elimination. Um so that's, that's about what I know about the red dragon. There's still a lot probably to uncover, but right now my main focus has been on the Amalek, which is on the inside of my arm. That's the one that's holding my sword. And uh, that's the black dragon, the, the uh, ultimate force of the, the ultimate enemy of the inner Illuminatis. And that's the one I've been really working with uh, in, in, in directing. Um, so yeah, it was okay. Do your tattoos have spiritual power and a call meaning? Yes, they have a lot of spiritual power. Um, so this, as I just said, this is the red dragon represents warfare. Uh, all, all my tattoos, if you can tell, they're on my left arm. So this is the arm of feminine energy. The left side of the body is feminine and it receives, it downloads. So everything on my left arm downloads into my being. So I've got the power of the red dragon, the ability to do psychic warfare using earth energies because dragons are earth energies. I've got the green dragon, which is above the red. So anything that's like, you know, with Mars comes really aggressive energies, right? Really like fiery, aggressive, you know, those are the energies associated with Mars. So the fact that there's a green one above it kind of mellows that out. So green is going to be associated with the sphere of Venus, which stands for victory. So anything in regards to warfare that I get into, I'm always victorious. And I've never I've never lost. I've never lost in a cult battle. I've never lost a battle in my life, ever. Um in regards to like if I'm if I'm on my path doing the right thing. Like I've been in fights before, like physical fights and I've lost before. But that was because that was a long, long time ago. And that was when I was not making good decisions. But recently I got into a fist fight with somebody outside and uh, I kicked his ass. Didn't even touch me. You can see my knuckles. Still a little scarred up. But uh, yeah, I kicked his ass. He called me out too. He was the one that called me out, which is the funny part. He was like, he said something about, he just said something. He disrespected me, and I and I told him he was, a, I told him he was a fuckhead, and he's a piece of shit. 
and he's scum of the earth. And then he got all mad. And he's like, he's like, let's take it to the alleyway. Come to the alleyway. Come to that. So I met him in the alleyway and I kicked his ass. Um, yeah. So that's the green one right above it. So transmutes all that fire into victory. So then we have the Amalek, which has a green eye. My eyes are green, has a skull on the sword, 100% manifestation. This sword is also symbolic of one willpower and symbolic of psychic warfare again. Okay. I'm, I'm really, I'm like a, I'm a psychic assassin. Okay. I'm the real deal. When it comes to occult magic, I can, I'm really good at killing people, really good at eliminating people. Um, let's see. I got the flames coming up and then there's an eight pointed star right here. This is the star of the Nephilim, the Kings of Edom, the underworld eight pointed star. So that's at the end of my wrist. And I got this tattoo before I even knew what it meant. Okay. I got this tattoo during the very beginning stages of my occult initiations, all intuitive. This is before I knew about Amalek. It's before I knew about dragon spirals, before I knew about red and what green meant, before I knew about any of this. This is after the fact when I started realizing what I had tattooed on me. And my artist specifically left this space open, which was hilarious because I didn't tell him what I wanted to get on my arm for the rest of my arm. But in my mind, I knew what I wanted and I want to put my sigil right here, which is an upside down triangle. And it literally the spot he left was just enough to leave an upside down triangle. So I took that as a sign. That's my next tattoo right there. Um, yep. So yeah, there's a lot of symbolism there. Think, thank you very much. I love all of your content. Thank you, Oscar. Once again, um, if anyone wants to get their questions answered ASAP, uh, leave a super chat and I'm going to, I'll answer your question right off the bat. Um, hey, was wondering, okay, there we go. There we go. There we go. I know that this is off course, but a lot of people think Lucifer is a woman and is a part of the dark feminine current and be giving birth. Okay. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, when it comes to spirits, I mean, they can manifest, a lot of them can manifest like as a man or a woman, but the better you are at psychic viewing and psychic interaction, you're going to get closer to the true form of the spirit. So the true form of a Lucifer is going to be a male spirit. And, um, Lucifer is definitely, uh, attuned to the feminine energies because he's the fallen angel. He's the angel that was in the Sephiroth and then dropped down to the clip off and the tunnels of set universe beat and fully initiated and then got crowned the ruler of the underworld. So that's his archetypal energy in regards to in be giving birth. No, that's just weird. That's just being weird. Uh, August, hi bro. What's up, man? Yo, 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 Ray. Hello all. Hey, what's up, brother? Uh, Mars Marks Media. All hail the Psy Lord, Tim Re <laughs> Tim Refat is cool. I, I, may, I feel like one day I might meet him and uh, have some, maybe do some work with him. I don't know. We'll see. Weird Fishes. What's the right directional system? The, good question. Good, good question. And I actually, I do really want to make a YouTube video on this subject. Um. And I feel like I have, but I don't know if I uploaded it. I may have like accidentally erased it or something, but I don't know. The real directional system is going to be, so you know, north, east, south, and west. So I'm first going to start with what's taught publicly and what's taught in all these occult orders. This is what they teach you. They say north is for the physical plane and is represented by earth. That's correct. But then they say east is associated with air and is represented by swords. That's what they say. Then they say south is represented by fire, which is connected to the wands. And then they say west is associated with water, which is connected to the cups. 
you don't believe me, go on Google or go on Safari and look this up. It'll, it'll say that. But this is not the real system. This is not the real directional system. The real ancient directional system is North Earth, physical plane. West, or excuse me, Northeast is going to be the realm of fire, deletion, okay? Wands, east, okay? South is the realm of water, the realm of time-like space, the astral plane associated with the cups. West is associated with addition, swords, air, okay? So when you're in the north, the black magician stands in the north, that's going to be the realm of physical manifestation, real number space, solid. East is going to be hell space. This is the realm of fire where deletion happens, where you can perform your psychic warfare in. Then south is the realm of the soul. It's the realm of water, the astral. Okay, it's the realm of the undead even. Then west is the realm of sea space, creation. The realm of angels, essentially. So if you study, if you study these occult orders, they're going to have you doing work in the east telling you it's air. So they're going to have you in the realm of deletion telling you and training you to think you're able to add things because they say east is for air. And air is truly in the west and stands for addition, creation. So when you're actually in the realm of fire thinking you're creating things, can you see how that might be a little bit inverted and how if you perform this long enough, everything you do when you're trying to create is actually going to destroy. And every time you try to destroy something, you know, they're going to say the realm of fire is in the South. So you're going to be standing in the South or facing the South which is truly the realm of your soul, but they're telling you it's the realm of fire. So you're burning your soul. And this is coming from all the occult orders that use this wrong directionary system, which is almost every single one of them. I mean, most occultists are using this wrong directionary system. And uh, that's what happens. It's, it's built, it is intentionally built this way to fuck up magicians. Because the real people that know the true directionary system, like myself, inner Illuminatis, inner Sanhedrin, Rothschild Jews, uh, royal families, these are the people that know the real system. They know the real system. And it's what I'm explaining. North physical, east fire, south water, west air. Okay? Okay. Everything else is inverted. And if once again, if you study any of the, these occult books, you'll see they're inverted. But if you don't want to believe me, go ahead. Do your thing. All right, let's see. Someone left a big chat. Being charitable for the work you're doing. Man, thank you. I appreciate you. And Morris, you're familiar too. I've seen you. I have seen your name before, and I appreciate you. You're awesome. Uh Uh, I know that this is, of course, but a lot of people think, okay, yeah, we read that. <laughs> okay, so that was a good question. Thank you, Weird Fishes. What's the right directional system? Okay. Yeah, Damien Eccles was locked up for 18 years on trumped up charges. Exactly. So Damien Eccles is a great example. And I, I like the guy a lot. I think he's a very wise guy. And I think he's achieved a high level of success in the occult field. And you can tell his intention is very strong because of all the stuff he had to go through. Um, 
but it doesn't have to be that challenging. You don't have to go through all that. And the reason why he got screwed because he was, remember, he was following the, the golden dawn one of the primary call orders, the reason why he got screwed is because of this fucked up directional system and their entire inverted Kabbalah. He's a great example. And I don't even think he knows he knows about it, but let going to prison for 18 years on trumped up charges be a great example of how fucked that system is. And then look at all these other people's lives. Alistair Crowley, Kenneth Grant, like they all failed. Crossing the abyss. Uh, okay. Seeing 555 five, five everywhere. Can you give your explanation of 555? Five, 51015. Five, 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 um, so there's a, I mean, there's a couple ways to break that down. You could break it down like this. 555. Um, five, five, can be broken down to 15. So if we come to Kabbalah, we can look at the 15th path. And that 15th path would be associated with the archetype of the emperor. And the Hebrew letter connected to it would be he. And he is represented by window. And is associated with H in the Hebrew alphabet. And in numerology, it would be the number five. Okay. Now, if we took 555 five, five and added it together, we get 5, 10, 15. And if you break 16 or 15 down in numerology, you get 5 plus 1, which would be 6. And that would connect us to the center of the tree at the sixth sphere, Tifereth, ruled by the sun, stands for beauty. So those are two ways that we can break down that number. And 5 is the number of? The pentacle. That's cool. Thanks for the explanation, Jeremiah. Absolutely. Augustine Galvez. Jeremiah, is it necessary to get started in Kabbalah before trying to contact the Goetia? So as long as you have impeccability, a warrior spirit, and um, uh, impeccability, a warrior spirit, and ruthlessness, as long as you have these things, yeah, you can totally go ahead and contact the Goetia. But if you don't have those things, I wouldn't, I wouldn't try and contact them. Because you're probably going to psych yourself out because you're going to contact a spirit that's very real. And when it starts showing you it's how real it is, that scares a lot of people. My, the first demon I summoned was Balaam back in 2018. And uh, I that same night I summoned him and invoked him, um, there was some very profound shit that happened. And I remember that same night I woke up randomly at 3 a.m. on the dot. And for those of you that know, 3 a.m. is associated with the demonic. And I literally, like, I remember waking up, looking at the time, and it said 3 a.m. And in my mind, I was like, whoa. Like, why did I just wake up randomly at this time? It was Blom. Blom was still present. Okay. Are the Goetia demons internal or external? Both. So they're external beings that have characteristics that also exist within you. But the characteristics within the demon might be stronger or more powerful than they are in you at the present moment before you invoke the demon. So when you invoke the energy, the reality is, is that that energy from the demon, the Ars Goetia, is actually a very, like you have the same energy within you. It just might not be accessible yet. So the goal is to invoke the Ars Goetia demon to then alchemize its characteristics and its beneficial powers into yourself. 
And at first, what tends to happen is people do that through possession, where you'll invoke the spirit and you'll notice you'll start being influenced by it. And the reason why you're being influenced by it is because it's possessing you. And the more you observe and the more you allow it to essentially possess you and you also you know, are, are trying to learn, you're intending to learn, over time, as you become more and more receptive, as you, train your, as you train your energy body to be more vampiric, you're going to be alchemizing and vampirizing that demon's power and energy into your own being. So are the Goetia demons internal or external? They're both. They can be both. It's not one or the other. But then the end goal is, is once you've alchemized all the Ars Goetia and you've developed all their abilities and all their powers, then you don't need to work with them anymore. Now they serve you by default. Because why? Because what are they programmed to do? They're programmed to serve the dark feminine entities within Universe B, within the Clipoth and the Tunnels of Set, specifically like Lilith. So when you turn when you turn your entire energy field into Lilith, when you take on Lilith's archetype, now they do that for you. And you're different because you're the human being that has the potential to achieve the source within you. And you may have achieved the source within you if you if you have done that. And now you're the most powerful entity there is once you've done that. That's why that's why spirits will make deals with you because they 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 recognize you're the source. They recognize you have that, that potential and they don't have that. So some of them will make that deal with you. Some will try to trick you into worshiping them or making deals where you're selling that source potential. But then if you're smart enough or if you're impeccable enough and warrior spirit enough, you're not just going to willingly give your soul up to anything. So some spirits will come to you and make deals with you and say, look, I know you're about to achieve the source. I know you have this potential. So I'll make this deal with you because I know you're going to do this. And I know when you do it, you're going to be the ultimate being. And I want to make sure I'm not destroyed. So I'll make this deal with you and I'll help you so that you can have a liking up towards me when you get to that point where you achieve the source, which was what Lucifer did for me. Lucifer came to me and he made a deal with me. And I made a deal with him. I said, you give me all your power and you teach me everything you know about spiritual evolution. And I, in return, will put you on my YouTube channel, which you can see in the bottom corner of the video, his sigil. And uh, I want money. I want success. I want my family taken care of. I want my loved ones happy. I want true love. I want authentic relationships, all of these things. I made a deal and he very quickly made that deal with me. And he was very willing, ready and able to make it because he knew what I was. He knew who I was. He knew I was going to achieve the source and he wanted to ally himself with me. And that's why Lucifer made that deal with me. Um, what are good ways to know thyself? Sit in silence. Uh, I do this currently. I will take at least 30 minutes to an hour a day to sit with no phone, no music, no nothing, just in silence and just be with myself. I do that at least an hour to 30 minutes. So there's days where I do it for like two to three hours straight. And um, that is a great way to know yourself. Mars Marks Media, the original 007. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, something moved. What happened? Hold on. Okay, the original 007. All right, so for anyone who's new in the chat, let's get a thumbs up. Let's get a thumbs up on the video. Let's break that 30 mark for the thumbs up. Let's watch that thumbs up button. Up. Come on, let's get that 30 mark up. There we go, 32. That's what I like. Oh, and that's the number for initiation because if you add the 10 spheres and the 22 paths, that gives you 32. So we hit that. Perfect. 
Look at that. A little ritual done on camera for all of us. See, once you get to high, high enough levels in the occult field, ritual is always done through observation because your observation is what collapses the quantum wave function. So at this point, my, all my rituals are done backwards. I do my rituals backwards because I'm a universe B dominant occultist. I exist in the tunnels of set and the clipothic realms primarily. Um, and in that realm, you intend things and it goes into the quantum vacuum and then enters within the quantum wave function and finds a very complex way to manifest in a very physics-based, scientific-based ritual. So I will intend things, they'll manifest, and then I'll explain what manifested and I'll tell, I'll tell whoever that I caused it. That's called universe B, occult magic. Rather than having a book and having to read a million things and stand in certain directions and do certain things, you don't have to at higher levels of occult magic. But, you know, in the beginning stages, you have to do all this, all that extra stuff. It's what trains you and what gets you prepared uh, to get into higher levels. Color red and Mars, are they also connected to Satan? Um, I mean, you could say so. You could say red's connected to Satan because Satanism in general is uh, psychic warfare, making people suffer uh, using psychic warfare. So that definitely could have a Mars connection. Um, yeah. Do you believe Baphomet is a real entity or just a symbol? It's both. Baphomet is definitely a real entity and he is definitely a symbol. Um Every entity is every powerful entity is a symbol. They all have their own sigils. They have their own symbols. Um, Baphomet specifically is a chaos entity, complete chaos entity. So, you know, when you're an initiate, you can use ba Baphomet um, to teach you. Baphomet's a very interesting entity, actually, because he was an entity that was primarily used by the Knights Templar. And they would use, this is where all that pedophilia comes into play. So for any of you, for any of you that um, know about pedophilia, you know, Jeffrey Epstein's and all that shit. Um, and you know about like certain Catholic priests that are known for getting involved in pedophilia. It's not because these people are just attracted to young children. Okay. It's, there's, it's not just that. There's an actual energetic dynamic with it. Um, and not even necessarily just pedophilia, but um, even um, specifically uh, homosexual uh, sexual in, uh, relationships. So in regards to Baphomet, um, one, that's in a, it's an androgynous being. So you can tell, you know, when you look at the Baphomet, it's like half male, half female. So... Um, the technology of Baphomet is to use males primarily um, to build artificial energy bodies. So as a male, when you stick your penis into something, you suck energy out of it. It's just naturally our makeup. You know, if you have a penis, whatever that goes into takes energy from it. Um, so when you are in higher level Illuminati's and you understand these energetic sciences, um, then the goal is to create a human being that's very powerful, but under the control of the people creating it. So for example, we had an Orlando Bloom and a Max Spears. Um, and they artificially built themselves up being involved in occult practices and homophobic sexual encounters, dumping energy into one another, you know, sticking the penis inside. And as soon as Orlando Bloom, before he marries Katy Perry, which is a, um, the high priestess of the Illuminati, that was her position, under Hillary Clinton, 
Um, right before that happened, Orlando Bloom and Max Spears, they were the two candidates. So from a very young age, and you can study all this, like don't take my word for it. Go and dive into it. You can do your own research. Orlando Bloom and Max Spears at a very young age, around the age of 13, they grew up together going to the same school, which was ran by, you know, an occult order. And this occult order was directly connected to the Knights Templars that used Baphomet technology. And they were using Max Spears in this uh, Orlando Bloom, building them up since a young age to be very powerful people using this technology of pedophilia. And then as they got older, uh, homosexuality to build up artificial energy fields. Um, and you'll notice that as soon as, or right before Orlando Bloom goes to marry the Illuminati queen, Katy Perry, Max Spears gets assassinated. And because Max Spears and Orlando Bloom were the two candidates, they needed to eliminate one. <laughs> That's bad. I'm flicking you guys off. They needed to eliminate one to then put all the energy into the Orlando Bloom, who was the chosen candidate to take on all the energy. So they built both of these people up and then they eliminated one. So if you study my channel, you'll know when you kill somebody using psychic warfare or just in general, um, the person who kills the person, the person who kills that energy um, goes somewhere else. So the energy travels. And since they created a link between Orlando Bloom and Max Spears, when they assassinated Max Spears, all his energy linked into Orlando Bloom. So that turned Orlando Bloom into a, a more powerful energetic being that was under the complete control of the people, the occult order that built him up in the first place. So now he's their powerful artificial puppet. And all of that technology of using homosexuality and pedophilia to build artificial energy fields is Baphomet technology. So Baphomet is the entity of that technology. And I have had direct encounters with that technology and I have used that technology myself and it is real. And I'm not saying I've done pet, uh, pedophilia. No, not that. But I have had encounters with homosexuality using this technology. Have you ever done any rituals from Mark Allen Smith books? No. You know, I've never done a ritual from a book. Like, I've never done a ritual from a book. Um, although I think Mark Allen Smith has a great book. I've looked into it and I've I can I've studied Mark Allen Smith and I've seen his interviews, and I can tell that that guy knows what he's talking about. And I mean, you can tell whenever you come across an occultist who's disciplined, who talks with boldness but also receptivity and you can tell is ruthless. I mean, Mark Allen Smith has a background in um, the military. You can tell he, I can tell energetically he knows what he's talking about and he's about what he says. And I can, I looked through a review of one of his books and saw through the pages and it's really good. I mean, he, he has you connecting with the most important spirits of the, initiatory process. So I highly would recommend his books. Do you believe in weapon binding? Weapon binding? What do you mean by that? Coast Guard the Dragon. What is your opinion on dragon magic? Powerful magic. That's, it's extremely powerful magic. Dra what does that mean, dragon magic? Simply means using earth energies, right? That's what dragon magic is. So that's the some of the most important magic to use. That's why dragons are very revered in many ancient cultures. And, uh, you know, dragons are hidden. You know, they're hidden. Um, like what is the, you know, dragons are reptiloid. And what is the evil being in the Garden of Eden? It's a snake, which is in the same family of dragons. And whenever we look back in medieval times, it's always like a human being fighting against a dragon. Why? Why is it always fighting against a dragon? Why isn't it riding a dragon? Why isn't it using the dragon? Why isn't it like Game of Thrones using the dragons, Queen Darnerys using the dragons? It's subtle symbolism that's trying to program the mind of the human being to, you know, 
not embrace dragons because dragons are the core of earth energies. And if you gain access to earth energies, the people that are trying to control them are fucked. Like what I'm doing, <laughs> watch my video on YouTube, uh, psychic warfare. And I'm telling you that video is powerful and it's going to continue to be powerful. And that's not the first one that'll drop too. Where can I read more about the true directional system? Um, I believe you'll be able to find it in the AE weight book called Holy Kabbalah. That in that book, I know they talk about the inverted pillars on Kabbalah, and I believe they also talk about the um, screwed up directional system as well. AE weight, Holy Kabbalah. Read that book. Thanks. Why are they seventy two Goetia and not more or less? Any info for Asmodeus? Why are they seventy two? Goetia, not more or less. Um, there's a certain gematria to it uh, that I don't really 100% know. Um, let's see, 32, 64. Oh, no, no, I know. 32, actually, 32. Yeah, there, no, there's a certain gematria to it that I don't fully understand, but they're all very important archetypal energies um, that you know you'll encounter through this initiatory system so that's why there's that amount of them because like this initiatory system of Kabbalah is ancient so when it comes to the 72 hours Goetia this is coming from this is information coming from people that have had experiences with this initiatory system whether they knew about it or not and they had encounters with entities on that system or entities and spirits along this journey of occult initiation. And they gave them names. And over time, what formed was the 72 Ars Goetia. Let's see. So once again, if anyone wants uh, their, their message to be answered right off the bat, then go ahead and leave that super chat. And I just realized that rhymed. I've been reading, learning, practicing all kinds of magic and occult practices. And I know people who are unaware of any of this knowledge who are way more powerful manifestors than me. Why? Because occult magic is power dependent. It's power dependent. So it doesn't matter how much knowledge you have, doesn't matter how much understanding you have, whatever, it's power dependent. So if those people are more impeccable than you, if they have more control over their sexual energy than you, if they have more of a warrior spirit than you, then it doesn't matter how much you study, how much knowledge you have, they're gonna be more powerful than you. That's how the occult field works. Knowledge is just a byproduct after you know, wisdom and understanding is just a byproduct afterwards, but power is dependent on your being, impeccability, warrior spirit, and ruthlessness. Is your sun silver? Is your sun silver or orange? Is my sun silver or orange? What do you mean? Is my son silver orange? Okay, no. It's both, but I don't know what you mean. My name means righteous. What is your perspective on a righteous person? What is my perspective on a righteous person? Um, what does it mean? Like, what does it mean to be righteous? Does that mean you're always right? I don't know. Uh, that's why so many elites are pansexuals. Exactly. And a big part of, um, you know, I was mentioning this earlier in the live stream, there is a very powerful energetic dynamic between a man and a woman and it's sacred and it's deep and it's very potent. Um, once again, there's a reason why there's always been a king and a queen that rule because of the difference between the energy fields and the assemblage points. Um, and that's why we see a lot of confusion between what 
you know, people are identifying as in today's time. And obviously, you know, I, I could care less. Like if you want to, if you feel respected, if I identify you in a certain way, I'm going to respect you. But I'm saying from an energetic standpoint, there is an agenda to try and interfere with this dynamic. Okay. Just, just to speak the truth about it. That's what's going on. Um, thank you for answering. Absolutely. Harmony nine message retracted harmony nine. Have you ever used draconic astrology? You know what? I never did. And I don't really know what that, like what it really, really means, but I know about like the constellation of Draco and I studied that a little bit, but I have a lot more to study in regards to that. Um, it's actually funny because my number is 47 and there's a constellation within the Draco. There's um, yeah, a constellation within Draco that is the 47th constellation and it's referred to as little lion. And keep in mind, that's the 47th constellation within Draco for 47, my number. And there's literally a coffee shop that is on the way to sunset cliffs where I live that I go to almost every day. And it's called the little lion. And I didn't know that until I studied Draco. So every time I'm getting coffee there, I'm t tuning into my number 47, which equals 11, four plus seven. And I thought that was crazy. I was like, whoa. Yo, bro, hope you're doing good. Would you recommend a beginner to work with Lucifer? Um, I was when I was a beginner, I worked with Lucifer, and it, it was the most important thing I did. But I don't know you. I don't. I don't know who you are. I don't know what your uh, what your background is. I don't know what kind of you know kind of energetic makeup you have. Like once again, if you're ruthless, if you're impeccable, and you have a warrior spirit, then yes, definitely, you need to work with Lucifer. That's like the most important thing. Um, but if you don't, if you're not ready to go into some deep transformation and like find yourself pulled into uh, an energetic current of initiation, then I wouldn't recommend working with Lucifer right off the bat because it's he's not a, a joke around spirit. Yo, bro, hold on, let's see. Uh, any thoughts on Asmodeus? Any thoughts on? Um, any thoughts in, on Asmodeus? Yeah. I mean, he's associated with the clipothic sphere of Gola Chab. And when I had experiences with him, I, he literally manifested in the guy I was working for at the time, my manager or my boss, he owned the restaurant and, uh, Asmodeus burns motherfuckers burns like Asmodeus is a, so Asmodee is associated with burning like that's a hell realm that you do not want to exist in for a long time. Um, he's a he's a destructive spirit, and when I uh, psychically viewed him, he appeared as a fiery, just a fiery being, complete fire. And uh, I used him to destroy somebody that I worked with at the time that was unnecessarily challenging me and disrespecting me. And she lost her job like that. So I like Asthma Day. And I use Asthma Day's power now to burn motherfuckers that come against me. And I throw them in. Asthma Day has nine hell realms. He has nine different hell realms. And, uh, sorry. Yeah, he has like his own nine separate different hell realms. And I, I was able to travel to those as well um, remotely. And they are not good places to be. You do not want to be trapped in his hells. Uh, so yeah, Asmodee can be a very dynamic spirit uh, to use psychic warfare for sure. Um, any thoughts on Rosicrucianism? Yeah, they're scum. <laughs> Harmony Nine, have you ever worked with the Necromon Necronomicon current like Azatha? Never. I've never worked Necronomicon. And um, I definitely find it interesting, but uh, I know I, I'm very glad I didn't work with Necronomicon because most of the people that I've, I've looked at that have, they don't really, doesn't seem like they got too much from it. Like it kind of seems like chaos kind of took, took them over. Um, 
I definitely think maybe studying it is a great thing. You can learn a lot from it. I, if I was to study it and go into it right now, I would be making a lot of Kabbalistic connections to it. But um, in regards to initiations and jumping into that current, no, nah, it's too, for me, it's too chaotic, way too chaotic. Can you explain number 47? It's always been my favorite too. Yeah, so 47 was uh, a number that I had a, a friend at the time, best friend at the time. This was like eight years ago. And he kept saying he would see this number 47. And I would hang out with him all the time. And then I started seeing that number 47 all the time. And sure enough, uh, it stayed with me for literally eight years. And it became such a prominent number in my life that it it's literally my Instagram handle. Um, and it, it's my number. It is lit, like that is my number. If you know me personally, you know my number is 47. And it once again, it's associated with the number 11. And that's connected with the hidden sphere on the tree of life, Dath. So that's always a gateway. Um, and there's also more to it. I mean, there's a, that, that can break down very deep. So I'm still learning about that number too. Are you projecting yourself here from a spaceship? Um, yes, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> uh, you mentioned not doing the LBRP. Would you recommend a substitute ritual that accomplishes something similar? No. No, the reason why is because the goal of that ritual is what makes it something you don't want to do because it eliminates energy. It's like the purpose of it is to banish energy. And I understand banishing. I get the idea of it, but people get like the reality is, is like, even if you're getting possessed, right? Like, let's be real. The goal is to alchemize the energy. So even if there is a dark force that's influencing you or possessing you, once again, the way you're going to alchemize it is by embracing it, right? Like the force can't overcome you. Only you can overcome you. So if you allow yourself to freak out and to be afraid that something's overcoming you, then you're doing it to yourself. But if you have a warrior spirit and you're ruthless and you're impeccable, then let's say a force hypothetically is possessing you or messing with you, you're going to embrace it and you're going to look at it from a different perspective and say, okay, although I don't like this energy, I'm transmuting it and it's making me a more powerful and stronger person. And that's powerful. That's important to become a powerful magician. You need that. How is a diamond formed? How are these diamonds formed? How are all these little diamonds formed? This diamond, this beautiful diamond, is formed under pressure. So if you want to be a diamond, you need pressure. So if you're always concerned with, let me banish energies that I don't like, then you're just being a pussy. You're just being a pussy. And you're not going to get that pressure to become a diamond. So I, I, that's why I'm not into the lesser banishing ritual at all. And it's calling on angelic forces, which remember, take away from the soul. So it's it's one of those rituals that's just not good for you. It's really not. But I mean, there's going to be people that disagree with me and that's okay. You know. Um, instead, I used a, um, I have a ritual that's that I perform on camera um, that comes from a Michael W. Ford book. I'm forgetting which one off the top of my head. Um, but it comes from the book, one of his books. My, I love. I think Michael W. Ford is a great author too, um, and I like him as an occultist as well. I have a lot of respect for him, um, and he has a ritual that's like similar. But you're not banishing energies; you're just calling on these clipothic entities in a star formation or in a circular formation. And that, that I use that ritual for almost a month straight, and I was just alchemizing all their energies, you know, while I was doing the ritual, it's an intense ritual, you know, I wouldn't jump right into it, but it was powerful. So I would just stay away from the LBRP unless you're like really freaking, really freaking out. But then you need to like ask yourself, like, why are you in the field? Like first develop your ruthlessness, first develop your warrior spirit, then develop your impeccability. 
That's the first and foremost foundation you need. You need a foundation, somewhat of a foundation, before you get into occult practices. Thoughts on Billie Eilish? Um, yeah, she's like a puppet. <laughs> That's all I got to say. She's like a puppet. She's like an A-list puppet. And Morris Bloodstone att att attaches dragon energies. Okay. Um, so if you are new to the uh, chat, definitely hit a thumbs up. Let's get that thumbs up to pass the 40 mark. Um, that'll be cool if we can get that thumbs up past the 40 mark. And if you have any questions that you want to ask and be answered right off the bat, or if you want to support the channel, feel free to leave a super chat. Um, let's see here. Thanks for all the knowledge. You're definitely a powerful occultist. You would definitely be remembered for all the work you put in. Thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, I am very aware. I'm very aware that I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave a legacy when I choose to go, and my legacy will will stand in time. I know that for a fact. And it's funny because. Even when like my YouTube channel, like my YouTube channel is still really small. Like you're, you all are going to see how big my channel gets over time. And it's, it's just something I, you know, I know, I know I can see it. I can see the timeline where that happens. And I've been doing this like before my channel was big, when I had like nothing, when I was making no money, I would have people that would message me in my comment section. They'd be like, you deserve more views. Like you know, you should do magic to make your channel get bigger and all that stuff. And I would tell them every time I would say, don't worry, it'll get there. It's, it's just patience is key. And when it gets big, the times where it gets bigger and where it grows is the exact times it needs to get bigger and when it needs to grow. And I've always, I've always known where I'm headed. I know where the future is going for me. I can see timelines and I choose timelines and I delete other timelines that don't serve me. So I know how big my channel is going to be. And I also know how big of a um, legacy that I'm going to leave. How to work more on discipline and self-control, as I think those two are key in spiritual growth. Thanks. Um, first, I would start with diet. Start studying what a healthy diet is in regards to – a great place to start is Dr. Stephen Gundry. So he'll teach you about the vagus nerve. He'll teach you about your gut health and what foods are good to eat that are going to align your nervous system within your stomach. And that has everything to do with your emotional state and the way you literally act and feel. So I would start there and then start getting involved into fitness. Or if you really want, if you really want a great answer, get into martial arts, get, get into a martial arts gym. I'm telling you that is one of the best things you can do. Like martial arts, if you can get yourself into a good gym, they teach amazing things in martial arts. I love martial arts. And when I have a kid one day, I'm going to make sure that they get into martial arts. I'm going to make sure they're in martial arts and yoga. Those two, if you can get into a martial arts class and do that, let's say three times a week. And if you can get into a hot yoga class, primarily ran by um, professional women, then you're going to get a really good balance of masculine and feminine energies in their higher polarity. And those two things are really good to train yourself to become more disciplined and just become a more powerful person. And you will be prepared to get into occult practices after that for sure. She got fired. Who got fired? Any basic practices to start building power? Um, yeah, as I said, like first foundation. So control your sexual energy. Practice with semen retention. Like that's huge. Huge. As a male, that's huge. And as a woman, controlling your sexual energy is huge. Um, 
diet, as I said, fitness, remember martial arts, yoga, these are huge and foundational. These are what teach you how to be ruthless. These are what teach you how to be impeccable. And these are what teach you how to have a warrior spirit. And then after that, I would say do invocations. Okay, find spirits in regards to primarily the Ars Goetia that you feel led to. So do some research. And if you feel led towards a certain Ars Goetia demon, I would say start with some invocations using a sigil. I have a video on my Patreon that explains how to do an invocation. And uh, start with that. And I, I recognize you, Oscar Rini. I believe you are in my Patreon too. Um, and start with that. Uh, once you have those first foundational aspects. Thank you for all your answers, brother. Absolutely. How can one get more in touch with their intuition? Can it take you down a wrong path? Can No. Um, how can one get more in touch with their intuition? Um, take 30 minutes to an hour a day to sit with yourself. Put your phone down, no music, no distraction, preferably in a dark room, turn the lights off or do it at nighttime and just sit with yourself for 30 minutes to an hour at least. The longer you go, the more results you're going to get. This will help you get in touch with your intuition because naturally what this is going to get you doing is listening to yourself. You're going to have thoughts that are going to come to your mind that you didn't know were there. And you're going to be like, what the fuck? I don't like this. And you're going to have to sit with it. And the more you sit with it, the more it comes to the surface. And the more it comes to the surface, the more you're going to be able to process it. And the more you process it, now you're starting to feel intuition. So the more you do that, the easier it gets, the more intuitive you become. The more intuitive you become, the more psychic you become. Can it take you down a wrong path? Um, the only time a path is wrong is if you destroy yourself going down it. So if you go down a path and you get destroyed going down that path and then you permanently quit after, then you lose. So yeah, that was the wrong path. But if you went down a path that was a bad path or a wrong path and you realize that was not a good decision – and then you course correct, then you just learned about a pathway that you're no longer going to take again. So you grew and you became stronger. So the truth is, is there's really no wrong path. It's all about how you perceive it and how you enter into the path. A wrong path can turn into an amazing path. And an amazing path can turn into a wrong path. It just depends on how you are going into that path. But all paths lead to extra knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Bro, your Patreon is very profound. As soon as I get paid, I'm joining the Become a Vampire. Nice. I'm glad to have you on that. And I'm performing it on the 29th of this month. So for anyone who wants that service done, it's getting ready. It's getting ready. I, uh, it's a cool service. I like that service. I used to get molested waking up a lot at 3 a.m., but I don't know which spirits all stopped until I embraced them as family. I walk in the dark and dive in it. Now I can sleep like a baby. Perfect. So what you said was very profound because when you fear these entities, they attack you. They, um, they feed off of that. So when you fear them, they mess with you. Like, for example, Ars Goetia, they will mess with you because they're feeding off of your fear. They're coming. They're, they're doing things that are provoking you and keeping you in that state of fear, and they're feeding off you. But when you love them, when you give energy off of respect or love, like, you know what? Rather than fearing, I'm going to try and love this because I feel like if I love this spirit and perceive it in that way, then it's not going to interact with me the same way anymore. Rather, it's going to interact the way that I'm interacting with it. And love actually is a very powerful energy that actually is in direct connection with what I was talking about earlier in regards to the Fibonacci sequences and spirals. 
love was programmed by the Enochian angels. So the emotions of love are the seven spirals. So when you love something, you're actually killing it. Okay. It's why like when people get married, most marriages end in divorce. And, you know, even if they don't, most of the times when someone falls in love with another person, and let's be real, take the, take a realist perspective on this. Both people end up getting fat and then their, they, their lives kind of like mellow out a little bit. You get what I'm saying? That's the energy of love. Not saying it always has to be that way, but most of the times it is because of the love, it, the, the emotion of love is programmed for the seven spirals of Fibonacci sequence, which counterclockwise is death and destruction and clockwise is anti-good. So when you're loving entities and spirits, you're essentially destroying them. <laughs> and when you're destroying them, you're, remember what happens when you destroy an energy, it goes back to the source that it was linked to that destroyed it. So when you do that with demons or any entities, they're controlled by love and it comes into your energy field. So that's an act of vampirism, which is funny because you said that comment right after Harmony 9 mentioned the vampire service. Interesting. Oh, and nice. We hit the 40 likes mark. Let's go. Okay. I didn't have a foundation when I first started looking into the occult and I paid dearly for it. It ruined my relationships and made everyone afraid. Yes. And that's exactly what it will do when you do not have a foundation getting into it. What about Jormung Dar? Oh, oh I don't know. And Norse magic, Jerry. I don't know. You know what's funny about that? It's so funny to me because obviously I'm Norse. Like if you look at me, you see a most likely you probably see like a Viking, right? Like you can see like Viking energy in me. And I'm definitely Norse. I come from Norse heritage. But I think that because I come from Norse heritage, that's already been a part of my my energy field. Like I know, like I don't feel intuitively guided to studying the Norse side of magic, at least not yet. And it's not really there for me. I think mainly because it's already in me. It's something I've mastered already, maybe in a different life. And it just runs through my blood because right now my, my primary focus is on what the highest level elitists are using, which is the Kabbalah. And I want to hack that system. Have Okay, so I'm going to actually wrap this up in probably the next 10 minutes. We'll see. This has been a good live stream. This is fun. I like this. I'm going to do this more often. Um, have you used Labradite? No, I don't think I'd have. I've heard about that, though, before. I think that's a popular crystal, I believe. Do you have DEA from Kabbalah? What does that mean, DEA from Kabbalah? Six months now, I feel like Asmodee is trying to communicate and get close to me, but I am very new to all of this. Is Asmodee an easy spirit to work with? No, he's not an easy spirit to work with. Not at all. Um, but if he's wanting to communicate with you, there's a reason for it. So try to figure that out. Can you elaborate a little on the Become a Vampire service? What things will I notice change in my daily life? I am thinking about upgrading to level four before the 29th. Um, well, it's going to be different for everybody, but the main purpose of the service is to change your energy field to become more receptive. So it's taking your energetic field naturally, which is in a more so objective universe A state, and then it's changing it into a ver universe B energy field, which is a universe B dominant. And I want you guys to understand when I'm mentioning universe A and universe B, I'm not, when I speak about them, I'm not saying that they're completely separate. They exist together, but the, the natural state of the human's energy field for most people, the mass collective is more universe A dominant. Okay. So it's important if it's more universe A dominant to balance that out and get into universe B. So you can, you know, balance those energies within yourself. So once again, that's what I do with that service is I take my energy field and I'm, as I said, like I'm somebody who's fully initiated in the Kabbalah and have crossed the abyss. So my energy field is completely different than the average person's. 
my soul is different. I change the structure of my soul. And I have the ability to take my energy field and place that into somebody else. So when someone buys, let's say, for example, my top tier, you're already linking to me because you're on my Patreon. So that's creating the first link. The next link is I'm messaging you on the Patreon. So on the 27th of every month, I, I gather up the names of the new top tier members. So that's the second link, um, the full name of the participants. And I, that's what I use in the ritual. And then the third link is I, I hold on to the names and I place them on my sigil, my symbol for my soul and my spirit. And as I gain power, that's directly linking to you too. So you're gaining power. So all vampires in general, people that have vampiric energy fields, we're all self-similar and we all feed off of chaos and we use it to our ability to gain more power and control our realities. So that's why I have it in my sigil. So there's three links being created. And then when I perform the ritual, which I document on the day of on my Patreon, I take little clips to show everyone what's going on. Um, I will do a visual, a specific visualization to take you to a certain um, structure that I built in the astral plane. Um, it's, it's a, you could think of it like an astral mechanism location that I take you into that I take you into and then I visualize turning you into a vampire using the occult knowledge that I have and then I perform a very high level occult ritual to transfer my energy field into yours um, and so far yeah I've had a lot of people say that you know they've had dreams the night of some people would there was a couple of people that said the night I performed it, they had a dream of me performing the ritual. And then there was times where people said that they used to have this really, this really rampant um, energy that was anxiety driven. Like they had this like nag, um, almost like a parasitic energy. And when I, since I performed that ritual, they said it went, it like disappeared. They felt like relaxed. Like something had like, like a couple people mentioned that their the back of their necks went loose and they said it used to always be tight there and it went loose and then they felt relaxed. So that was very common. I've had one person that got into a big relationship breakup. Uh, they were in a relationship for a long time and then they broke up right after the service. So that was clear signs that that relationship was not serving either of them anymore. Um, there's been all different types of responses. So it, it really depends on the person, but the, the main idea of it is to take your energy field and change it into a energetic structure where you're no longer feeding chaos, but you're now feeding off of chaos, turning it to your power. So that's the idea. When Oh, and it's done on the 29th because that links you into DAF, which is two plus nine is 11. Okay. Uh, when entering death, oh, and pff, funny enough, the next comment is when entering death, what is the best way to not get trapped there? What a correspondence. Um, when entering death, what is the best way to not get trapped there? Um, well, if you're going in from an initiatory perspective, um, you're not, you know, once again, you need found, you need the foundation, right? Like as long as you're ruthless, you have a warrior spirit, and you're impeccable, you're not going to get trapped. If you're afraid you're going to get trapped, then you probably shouldn't be going in. You got to trust your foundation over your fears. Princess Gamero. Oh, wow. <laughs> Shattered Amethyst. Yeah, please do more live streams. It's been really fun. For sure. I love it. I'm having fun too. Um. Could you do Goetic invocation before universe B initiations? Yeah, you can. Um, but what you'll recognize is that it pulls you into, it pulls you closer to universe B initiations. So it'll eventually pull you there in that direction because the Goetia are directly associated with universe B and a lot of them are vampiric in nature. So they'll eventually find a way to get you to universe B. So you do want to keep that in mind as well. Um, like when I first worked with Balam, 
I lasted with Balam for like a week. And then Balam was like, hey, um, you know, I've taught you some things, but you need to work with Lucifer. And not only like was he just like, you need to work with Lucifer, but he's like, Lucifer is is about to show up. Like you're about to start working with Lucifer. And uh, yeah, I had some really profound experiences take place with that. And sure enough, Lucifer appeared and uh, sh showed up in my life in a very, very profound way. And that became the main spirit I worked with for pretty much my whole initiatory journey. And I'm telling you, Lucifer is one of the most important spirits to work with because he was the light bearer. He was the hidden aspect of chaos that secretly took over the underworld, took over chaos. So you want, you want that archetypal energy in your energy field. Could you do Goetic invocate? Okay. I appreciate the answers. You should do more. Yes, definitely will do. May I confess spirits of all sorts have spoken to me throughout my life. Not regular, but it's powerful and stays with me. I had two vampires who wanted to sway me, but a werewolf dog defended me. Okay. You are one of us. Don't pretend you're not. What they said to me. You are one of us. Yeah, I mean, it's true. Like, you know, like with demons, like it can be tricky, you know? Like when you fail the crossing of the abyss, you you essentially become a demon. Um, but at the same time, remember, like the goal is to develop all the demons within your energy field. So yeah, like part of what they're saying is right. And then part of it's wrong. You are one of us. Don't pretend you're not. Yeah, you are one of, you know, I am a demon. Once I suck all your power dry and add it to myself and then I can command you. But uh, I'm not a... Uh, I'm not a bitch to any spirit. That's a fact. I really do appreciate you for everything, bro. You have definitely helped me out with my ascension um, when I started working with the nine demonic gatekeepers. I love that, man. And I remember you mentioned that to me too. Um, I appreciate you. And uh, I like the f I, I love the fact like whenever when anyone is taking their occult practices seriously, and they're recognizing that is based around evolution. That's what I have the most respect for. And uh, I can see you're doing that. So I love that. Thanks a lot. I've learned a ton and evolved with the knowledge you've chosen to share. Absolutely. What's your fave zodiac sign? Well, I'm a Leo. So I'm going to go with Leo. I love Leo. I'm a king. That's my, and, and look at my hair. Like, am I not a Leo? Come on. I'm totally a Leo. Uh, see, in sidereal Vedic astrology, I'm a Leo. But in uh, tropical astrology, I'm a Virgo, which doesn't really resonate with me at all. And in, but my behavior, I'm like, a, I, I speak like a Leo too. I act like a Leo. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. That was what they said to me. Can't write into. No, I know. I know. I know that's what they said to you. Um, Daniel C., can you talk about King Paimon? Um, I can, but I don't have too much to say about King Paimon. I don't have too much experience with him. Um, he, I, what I do know is that he can help you speak, like help you be better at speaking. But other than that, I don't have too much experience, too much to talk about. So can't really answer that. I'm a Scorpio. Oh yeah. I got Scorpio energies too. People, people always think I'm a Scorpio. Um, I like the sign of Scorpio friendly. <laughs> they said, what? Yep. Leo. Uh, I've tried to work with Lucifer and King Paimon, Lilith and all kinds of meditations with sigils, invocations, offerings, hours and hours. I feel like I'm being totally ignored. I can feel it. Okay. Um, well, what you need to do then is uh, stop trying to, to, you know, work with all these entities and you got to focus on other stuff in regards to your foundation. Like get involved and, and like, 
I'm not, this, this isn't random. Like I'm telling you this, like this, this can cause a big change for you. Uh, Oscarini, get involved with MMA, uh, get, get involved with martial arts. Just like if you want to throw yourself in to developing yourself, get involved with martial arts and do that for at least six months and then start approaching the occult field. And I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you, you'll start getting results. You can become, you can become a demon. How does that happen? If we're so different with the human soul change into demonic, you can become a demon. How does that happen? If we're so different with the human, um, yeah, well, when you turn your energy field into a vampiric energy field, you suck the archetypal energies from any spirit. So when you're calling a demon and you have that type of energy field, you're becoming that archetype. Um, and the soul changes. No, the soul doesn't change demonic. The soul changes into a black hole. Once you've crossed the abyss, which is a permanent energetic aspect of your being that constantly sucks in energy. Like my soul is now a black hole. Okay. And it constantly sucks in energy. So it's, it's the state of being the ultimate king vampire. Um, but before you cross the abyss, your soul hasn't black hole on itself yet. So, um, you know, the more vampiric spirits you invoke and work with, like Lilith and any of the other vampiric uh, entities or demonic spirits or whatever, the more you focus on trying to develop yourself to be vampiric in general, or if you get my service, um, which is probably one of the quickest ways to do it for you, um, your energy field is changing. You know, it's learning how to suck in energies. So... Planetary initiation, always a nice step before hitting the clip on. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, working with planetary energies is always great before getting into like demonic workings, right? Yeah, like draw, you know, create symbolism for planets and get, you know, create your own little rituals and your own little setups for planets. And, uh, make your intention pulling down that planetary energy. And I guarantee you'll see correspondences that have to do with that planet. And uh, that is a great place to start because you're not going to just thrust yourself into like all these forces of nature that are going to start like interacting with you, but you'll be rather, you'll be pulling on planetary energies. Thank you, Mellow Sloth. And look at that, Mellow Sloth 29. So the 29 equals 11. So Mellow Sloth just came in with that opening of a gateway to say, hey, look, I think you should start here, guys. And that was a good, that was a good um, message. I actually just ordered a reading from you tonight. Looking forward to it a lot. Going to be a Patreon event. Yes, I love that. So that was you? Uh, perfect. I saw someone booked a reading. I didn't see the name yet. Cool. I'm excited to do that. And I think you booked it for the 30th too. So that'll give me that. I'm glad you booked it for the 30th because tomorrow I've got a busy day uploading the video on David Bowie. Oh, I got a good YouTube video coming. It's, oh, it's, it's, it's going to be my longest YouTube video. It's going to, it's going to take me a while to upload tomorrow, but it's a good video. It is a good video. Um, cool. Virgos are very intelligent in Virgo rule Mercury that deal with intellect. And I definitely said, okay, cool. So yeah. Yeah. Um, Harmony nine is seeing that Virgo aspect of my tropical astrology in me. So it is a testament that Virgo, I mean, um, tropical astrology and sidereal, it's not that one is right and one is wrong. They are both coexisting together. One's more emotional, one's more mental. The human being will resonate most likely more with one of them, but they both play roles. So thank you, Harmony Nun. Um, Custard, Custard the Dragon. I think I have got a little powers of a vampire just by watching your video and being impeccable. Yeah, no, seriously, like as I've said, every one of my videos are rituals. Like 
I'm an, I'm a high level occultist. So everything like, remember observation collapses quantum wave functions. So you watching me, you're linked to me in my energy field right now. And everything about me is ritualistic. I mean, I got the moon in the background, I've got the skull for death on my finger, all kinds of symbolism everywhere. And uh, just my energy in general. So yes, a lot of people are going to be able to carry that energy that I have simply by watching uh, or at least experience bits of my energy or aspects of my energy simply by just watching my channel. Your D9 chart is important too in Vedic astrology. It's basically your progress chart as you get older. You should check. Yes, I know. I know. I know there's like a lot of different aspects of astrology, especially Vedic astrology that I want to get into. There's a lot that I'm studying right now in regards to Kabbalah though and, you know, the initiatory system. But once I finish that, astrology is what I'm going to like really grasp. Can you please tell something about Belial? I already spoke about Belial, but um, very important spirit to work with because he teaches you how to be worthless. And that is what protects you in universe B. If you go into universe B to thinking you're um, the, thinking you're the most important thing on earth in regards to your ego, if you think you're going to prove to all the demons that you're it, like proof, like the word highlighted is prove. If you think you're going to prove to all the demonic forces that you're better than them and you're going to overpower them, you're going to burn out many times, many times. I burned out many times. And then you'll get to a state of nothingness. You'll get to a state of like exhaustion. And that is the essence of worthlessness. And that's how you successfully traverse through the abyss within the clip off and overcome Karanzan. If you go into the abyss to try to cross it and you have too much self-importance, Karanzan will devour your fucking soul and you will not have a second chance. Okay. This is what happens to most occultists. Okay. I want that to be understood. Most occultists fail the crossing of the abyss and they think that they did. They think they did it properly but they didn't. And you can tell by the way their lives pan out. They usually get a dr get drug addictions afterwards. Um, they lose finances. Their life starts to just go down to a place of um, chaos. Like life just becomes chaotic. They lose a sense of purpose. Um, it's one of these things that, that takes place. Um, and obviously my experience of crossing the abyss was the exact opposite. If you study my channel, you'll see about somewhere around almost a year ago is when I crossed the abyss. And ever since then, my channel has been growing. My purpose has been getting stronger. Um, and my life is getting better as I speak. Which is a testament of me successfully crossing. And I bust my ass to do it too. Like it was not a joke and it was not easy. I, I, it, I played with my, my insanity. Like it was tough. And that's coming from me. I'm a warrior. I'm a warrior. Okay. When I tell you it was not an easy experience, I'm telling you. Lifting souls. Oh yeah. Sup dude. Can your whole life be a journey through universe B? That's how my life feels. So far. <laughs> uh oh, that's a sign. So at 255, I'm gonna bounce out. That's how my life feels so far for 63 years, like a constant initiation and a test. LOL, not fun. Well, yeah, well, when you're trapped in the clip off, when your soul is shelled in the clip off, which is most people, um yeah, it's it's like a default state of torture and going in loops. So that's most people though. So the way to get out of it is by once again, for you developing that foundation first, and then eventually approaching Klepothic and tunnels of set initiation to travel through and then re uncover and absorb your soul and then transform it by crossing the abyss and forever be a different person. Um, so what you're explaining right now sounds like you're just explaining your soul being shelled within the clip off which is the case for most people. You know, it's not just like you, it's a lot of people feel that way. 
to David Bowie, last album definitely hits occult vibes. Oh yeah, dude, David Bowie is um yeah, he was a puppet. He was a master puppet. And that's why he died on a ritualistic year. If you add up the numbers of when he died, it equals 11. He was a sacrifice. And he died from illness, too. Um, sorry for all the questions. You are intriguing, my friend. Haha. <laughs> Thank you, man. Is Kundalini related to Raising the Bride? Yes, Kundalini and Raising the Bride. Raising the Bride is definitely connected to uh, controlling and raising your sexual energy. And Kundalini is sexual energy. So, yes, they are connected. And funny, look look at all these correspondences. So Matthias H. said that. And then right below, when we're talking about serpent sexual forces, we have a message that was deleted by Soul Serpentine. Look at that. Correspondences. See, this is ritualistic magic happening right in front of all of our faces. Oh, and for anyone who's new to the chat, let's get the thumbs up. Let's hit that thumbs up. Let's try and get this chat to 50 likes right off the bat. 50 likes. Okay. And I'm going to be bouncing out in the next five minutes. So if you feel like you don't have a question that's about to be answered in time, definitely hit that super chat and I will answer your question before I leave. Okay. Do you remember me? I'm Lucifer Maimon from Insta. <laughs> Do you want me to continue sharing my experiences? Um, it's up to you. If you feel led to share them, go ahead. Um, but I do, re I do remember somebody named Lucifer Maimon messaging me. Um, do we get a second trial? I don't know what was happening until over a year later. The divine femme wanted my head friend. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, learning new info from you. Thank you. Absolutely. David Bowie's last album just called X. Oh, and guess what X is associated with? The Kabbalah tree. So X is going to be the Hebrew letter for the very first path on the tree, which is associated with uh, the Fool tarot card and stands for a, a, a left. The Hebrew letter is a left, which is represented by ox, which is the, the animal for the human being. And is associated with the num numerology of one. So by him naming that album X, that's symbolic of taking or linking his album to occult initiation. But David Bowie, since he's a top tier puppet, or since he was, because he's dead now, because of all his evil that he did, that, that he didn't really understand, because he was the puppet, um, that's his karma, <laughs> was becoming a sacrifice of his own work. Um, because he was a puppet, all that is led to shell you. His work is like very dark and you'll see in the, the video breakdown I do with the David Bowie too. Uh, have you watched the, <laughs> nothing after that. Oh, wow. I call myself the worm of the abyss. I have been through hell. Tonight, the super chat is absolute destiny. Let's go. Dude, I'm loving your channel. Keep up that school will be fire. Oh, yeah. Thank you. And it will. I'm, I know it will. It will. What music video do you plan to break down next? So I after the David Bowie one, I'm going to be breaking down some more uh, recent videos. Um, this David Bowie one, the music video is like 10 minutes long in general. So I went on a whole breakdown. Like the video is literally my video of the breakdown is literally like two hours, maybe even more. So it's going to be a long one, but I'm going to do some more recent videos and I'm going to be explaining a lot of the science of occultism that we're seeing in these newer videos and what they're trying to communicate to the mass collective subconsciously. Um, and you'll like when you when you start watching what I'm explaining, what I'm breaking down, it's gonna start blowing your mind because you're gonna start seeing how they're using the same symbolism or very similar types of symbolism over and over and over in all of these videos. And uh, you're gonna see the things I'm talking about. That there's a lot of things that I'm sure I talk about that some of you or a lot of you don't even understand yet. And when you see that I break these things down in these music videos, 
you're going to recognize that the music industry is very aware of this occult science that I'm explaining on my channel. And I am definitely not liked by inner Illuminatis either. But uh, thankfully, I'm too powerful. Hmm. All right, everyone. I had a good run tonight. Uh, we're at the 255. I'm going to leave it here. I appreciate all of you. Uh, thank you for coming in, and thank you for everyone who uh, supported through the Super Chats as well. I really appreciate that. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to leave it here. I definitely am going to be doing this again. This was really fun. And uh, so definitely look forward to coming back on a live stream. This is something that – yeah, I mean, I'm definitely going to make this like a common thing now. Um, it was fun. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Everyone, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day or night wherever you are, and I will see you on the next video. Peace.